Hey, it's uh, time for Type 40 Live materializing again here with the live stream Doctor Who magazine show across your view screen in real time on YouTube, Rumble and Facebook, always in front of a live chat full of friends, fans and companions just like you. A touch of a touch of night fever. That, that was, wasn't it to start us off with the disco doctor himself. I'll tell you what, in that outfit, it'd be a murder to get any WKD stains out of his strides, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, heaven knows where that night went. I think it's probably best we don't know. You've got to laugh. <laughs> We've all got to laugh, haven't we? Uh, fortunately, everybody, I have packed the white pills. There's a lot to get into on this edition of the show. Woo! <laughs> I'm Dan Hartley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks. Hello. And this is where we track the, the whole Hooniverse. Yes, from uh, the past, present and the future. Uh, we poke our noses in and we speak out. And uh, yeah, whatever will be. <laughs> will be. Oh, dear. Uh, nice to see you. Oh, yeah, it's all chat. Loading up with comments. Brilliant to see. Get yourself settled down. It's going to be a rocky ride. Fortunately... We haven't just got 15 incarnations of the Doctor. We've gone far, far better with a uh, perfectly chosen crew to gather around the console here on this edition of the show. Uh, yes, we're streaming... Uh, blah, blah, blah. We're streaming across YouTube, Rumble, and Facebook to the Type 40 Facebook group there. Please remember, if you're in the Facebook group, don't forget to hit the little blue link. Then Facebook tells StreamYard who you are. StreamYard tells us, and we all get on first name terms that's how it's got to be to cozy down here in the console room they've uh, they've changed the lighting here in this I, I think it looks a lot lot cozier could still do with some soft soft furnishings couldn't it yeah let us know what you think there in the comments section okay we're going to furnish it with some bodies some voices and some faces and some friends first of all i got a little bit excited Last week, I think it was, when I saw that uh, Queen Charlotte was uh, joining the cast of Doctor Who. I thought, wow, I, I know her. It, it turns out, I think I've got my, my people wrong. This isn't the, this isn't the same Charlotte. But, uh, you know, maybe one day, Charlotte, maybe one oh. day. <laughs> I was so wondering where you were going to go with that whole segue. But yeah, what I don't have a clue this? who this is. I feel even worse now. Well, apparently this this woman plays uh, Queen Charlotte on Bridgerton. Oh yes, I've actually I've not watched Bridgerton, but I've seen her her pictures of her in that role. So yeah, technically yeah, so, there's a link, I suppose. Yeah, yes, yeah. so I, I immediately thought of you. Of course I did. So apart from that disappointment, how's your weekend been? <laughs> oh, it, it's good. It's sort of I'm back at work now, and it's like back to the back to the getting up and having lovely children to deal with. <laughs> You were very much still in uh, Easter mode, you can tell. Any uh, any space babies in your in your care? <laughs> uh, sometimes they act a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous stuff. I can't remember. Had we got the episode titles when we last spoke? Uh, we? Uh, well, we did. We did the podcast, so I think yes. Yeah, yeah, we did, didn't we? We got we went through all of them, didn't we? My God, it's been a very very busy few weeks who else have we got let's grab now uh sarah has been uh showing off her doctor who knowledge away from youtube for a change over in the real world apparently yes. she does have a real life so <laughs> happy to say she's back to tell us more about it hello everybody hi Hello, uh, yeah, Sarah. well, it wasn't. You're making it sound really glamorous. I went to a pub chat, you know, which is as my want. Oh, <laughs> I'm waiting oh, was this for a the comments. A quiz? Was this a pub quiz? It was a pub quiz, and it just so happened to be Doctor Who themed. And my cousin told me about it, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to go, aren't I? So I dragged my poor family, and uh, we went, and it, it was for charity as well, and. Uh, and I only went and won it. <laughs> <laughs> so was it you individually, or was it like a team of people? It was you, a team. It was, four or five it, it, it would, it, it, you could have a maximum of six in your team. So we, it was just the family. So it was me, Chris, and the boys. And between us, uh, we did it, yeah. I, I must stress, it was mostly no hope. Because, you know, I'm not I'm not That's that well first in classic. But, yeah, it still counts. Um, so off. And I, I got... I only got three questions wrong out of 60. Wow. 
Um, and well, I'll, I'll tell you the I'll, I'll, I'll say the questions that that stumped me, and you'll see uh, see if you can answer them. So, um, okay. What was the name of the school where the tenth doctor went undercover? The reunion. I can't quite remember that. I can't. Um, it begins with kick a G. Up, well, I tell you what, why don't we, well, I, I suspect the people in the live chat mm -hmm. are shouting about that right yeah. now. So why don't we see if any of our other combatants might know the, the mm -hmm. answer to that. We're going to bring some more bodies in around the console room. First of all, I'm happy to say that back on the show after a few weeks, we've got John Yorden as well. Hey, how you doing, oh. right? Hello, John. Hello, mate. How are Hello, you? John. So you've just, you've just heard about you. Sarah's struggle there with the pub yeah. quiz. How confident are you? Have you got the right answer, do you think? And how confident are you? Me, me and Sarah have had this conversation, mm -hmm. and I didn't uh. know it. I didn't know it. You know, so uh, all hail to the great one. Is it? <laughs> well, no, I will. No, because I didn't know this one, so I'm not a great one either. You won. Uh, <laughs> uh, still yeah. won, though. So I'll, yeah. Yeah, well, so I'll see if anyone gets it in the chat and then during the course of the stream I'll say the other two questions that I didn't get. Um, so it's what was yeah. the name of the school in school? In school yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I can see our, uh, our next panellist. I can see by the look on his face he's thinking mm -hmm. it over as well. But uh, I'm going to bring him on now. So you, you're about you're out of thinking time. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, anyway. Adam Charter, the geek's handbag, and uh, yeah, congratulations. He's now a married man. He is. Hey. Woo! Congratulations. He's under the thumb at last. Yeah. Well and truly under the thumb. Now. <laughs> he, he got no you escape. in the end. Yeah, yeah. Still getting away. You're right about the cogs turning, mate. Yeah. I was I was hoping that I would spy the answer in the chat so I could steal it and pretend I knew. <gasps> You cheater! Yeah, I don't know, and I love a quiz. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. Oh, honestly, Adam, I was kicking myself. I really was. I get the feeling I'm going to do the same when you tell mm -hmm. me. I'm pretty sure it does begin with a G, doesn't it, Sarah? I'm not. No, let's mm. let's go and find let's go and find out in the live chat. I think and say see what they've got to say rather than us sitting sitting around here for too long. But Adam, yeah. what do you make of the console room here? Has this grown on you now? Now they've tuned it up and changed a few of the bulbs. I really like that picture, Dan. I've not seen that before. Um, yeah, it just I, I love the contrast of colours. So this is more what I want to see, so it looks less clinical. So yeah, I really mm. like that picture. I think we're getting we're getting yeah. somewhere. In this it, respect, it, I anyway. admit it, it, it is an improvement, but I hate that. Right, it looks like a marble run. That's all I see. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> I do feel Wait, like if I went in that console room, I'd be going in, coming out with a couple of fillings or something. It does yeah. look a little bit uh, <laughs> like a dentist room. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, I do like it. Where's the hat stand? Coach yes, stand. definitely. Yeah. Where is the hat stand? It, it? Yeah. Oh. There'd be it's no the room for that. Like that would make the difference, you know? Yeah, let's do it. Make, make <laughs> all the difference. Uh, since the last time we saw you, Adam, there's, obviously there's been a lot going on for you personally. You've been all over the world, haven't you? Particularly all over America, following yeah. your, your feed at the Geek's Handbag and your social media. You've been pretty much everywhere I would ever wish to go if I ever made it over to the States. It's incredible. So th there's that. But have you managed to keep an eye on everything that's been going on with Doctor Who. So we've got episode titles, we've got trailers, we've got posters, and we have the official wor word as well that we're back to we're back to season one rather than series 14 and, and all that jazz. How are you with everything now? Has it been choppy waters for you to navigate or are you hanging on in there? Uh, no, I've been managed to keep up quite well with everything, with the trailers and everything dropping. I mean, as much as X or Twitter, or whatever you want to call it, is a bit of a cesspit, it is a good source of information when it comes to things dropping like trailers and stuff. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty much up to date. The only thing I'm not getting a feel of by being over here is what the buzz is like back in the UK. So yeah. I was talking to Gary about this when we recorded the mm. podcast yesterday. I was mm. saying to him, are there trailers on the TV? Is it? Are there like snippets in between shows? Is there a hype back there in the UK? Because obviously over here in Texas... It's a bit like you're in a void, you know? I mean, I, I still talk to shop staff about Doctor Who. I'm constantly amazed how many people, when I go in a shop, will spy me wearing a Doctor Who T-shirt. Really? And start, yeah, yeah. I, I, all the time, Sarah. It, it, it's, it's, so it's still a thing out here. Mm -hmm. People still love the show. But obviously, like, I'm not getting whether they're into the new stuff or not. It's always the same thing. It's like, oh, I love David Tennant. And I wish, you know, it's like they love Tennant over here. 
yeah. which is lovely. That, that's lovely, yeah. isn't it, Adam? But we need the appetite. We, what we need to... I want them to say to me, oh, yeah, I can't wait for shooty. And I haven't had anybody over here say that to me yet. So that's why I'm trying to gauge what it's like back in the UK. Is the hype real over there? Well, we've had these new posters released today, this week, mm -hmm. certainly. But the only places that I've ever seen them are online across social yeah. media accounts mm -hmm. or the official ones and shared by fan sites. I've seen nothing on buzzes. I've seen nothing at bus stops or on billboards mm -hmm. or anywhere. I don't take, take a newspaper and I don't really read that many printed magazines. So I don't know how it's making its way through to traditional uh, media. I, 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 can experience? I can say as somebody who's, whose house still has BBC and a television license. So I see BBC advertised mm. as normal. I've not seen a single trailer. For Doctor Who yet. Wow. wow. Not even 30 second things no. not dropping here and there? Not even like a, a cut down version of any of the two trailers they put out. And that surprised me actually. I was like, surely you'd start to see even the little like Adam was talking not about. Not even over the Easter holidays, Charlotte. You didn't see anything then? No. I, I saw wow. because I remember thinking they advertised a Christmas special. I remember seeing the trailer and the sort of build up for that of in on the bbc but there's been crickets for the new series mm -hmm. absolute crickets that surprises me because yeah i assumed you'd be yeah. getting like little like little 10 second like bursts in between like east enders or something like that Certainly you know not. doctor who march the 11th no. and all this sort of thing. No. tumbleweeds adam really yeah 2005 wow, it is not <laughs> That's yeah, really surprised me, actually. Yeah. Traditionally, Adam, during the Russell T Davies era and the right the way up to the first season with Matt Smith, this would be the time of year where a new season of Doctor Who would begin on the telly. You know, we wouldn't have mm -hmm. this extra month's wait. So you would think public holiday and all that. I know we've got May Day to come, but May Day, I don't know. It's nowhere near as big a deal, is it? No, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased with the date because it, it works out very well for me because I that's the week I come back to UK so yeah. the, the timing has, has really worked out well for me um, because I don't have Disney Plus over here um, mm -hmm. so I would have probably been watching it you know on the iPlayer or whatever with a VPN but you know what I mean yeah. I, so but I'm glad I'm going to be back in the UK to see it um, I'm not very happy about the midnight thing I mean I'm not like losing sleep no. over it but I I do feel that's taken away a sense of momentum of it being like six o'clock doctor who's on today at six o'clock it's kind of taken mm -hmm. away that moment which is a bit mm -hmm. of a shame but um yeah it's it's just what is it a week and a half now two weeks that it comes on yeah well, a few uh, people brilliant. said they've seen it but like i said it's still not a wall of people in on the chat saying they've seen a, a load of advertising so i think it, if it is it must be very sparse and i've just happened to not see it but it's not a blitz it's nowhere near a blitz G no. Gary said the same thing, uh, Charlotte, uh, the guy I do the podcast with, uh, when we chatted Jesse, I asked him the same question and he said exactly the same thing. He said nothing, mate. I was like, really? That's why I'm asking you. Cause I was like, yeah, but you don't really watch <laughs> television, Gary. You're like, you know, you're on the, uh, he's an iPad guy. So yeah. that's why I thought I'd get an idea from you guys, but seems that it's not the case then. Now I gave up my shame. TV license several years ago. How about you, John? Have you still got one? And do, have you caught much advertising? Have you caught your advertising that the others haven't? I've not seen any of it. But then I've not. Although I've got a TV license, I've not watched terrestrial channels much in the last few years, anyway. But I would have expected to at least hear adverts on the radio about it, at least, uh, as like as like Charlotte was saying, or or seeing just adverts on buses or at bus stops on posters, but I've not seen any of that where I am. Yeah. Even, so even now I'm thinking about it because my dad reads papers. There's been hardly anything in the papers either. Strange, because isn't it? With the Millie stuff, that was in the papers. Yeah. When it, she, she got announced, that was in the papers, obviously. But as a just fluff pieces, you know, like I can remember back in 2005, they were still they were doing like put in advertisements, weren't they? They were yeah. doing fluff pieces and stuff mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. None of that even. So, yeah, across the board, I think they've been very thin. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I remember Russell T Davies said it during the 60th, didn't he? He says, oh, you know, when the new series comes along, the PR machine will ramp up for that. I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. but I've not seen it ramp up. Not 
not to the levels we've had, no. we've seen it in the past. So not in the way I think we wanted to ramp up, John, with yeah. a, about the actual stories and the series and the characters. Yeah. I mean, your cosmic joyride awaits. We've been promised across several posters now. I think most of us are kind of up for that. What we're not so much up for is the never-ending circus that seems to go on around it and we're definitely going to get stuck in to a lot of that on this edition of the show to compare notes and and what have you i mean we'll see whether he's still smiling at the end of it i i wouldn't, wouldn't get your hopes up shooty but uh, make yourself comfortable fortunately though we are stacked and stocked with with white pills in between that and the first of which i think is is this so ah tom baker everybody oh. if that doesn't get you back to a happy place i don't know what will the sight of the fourth doctor himself lining up some shots there by the look of things i don't know what he's going to go for first looks like he's going to work his way from one end to the other i'd say john very very yeah. you know what tom was like he was a bit of a scoundrel back in the day now not so much but he can be seen sometimes out out on the streets by members of the public who, who seem to grab him and, and take selfies and he's more than happy even at how old is he 90 years of age he's more than happy to oblige and this is just the latest one there there's tom yeah, out great. in Petal, in rye with with a passerby picking up the papers and uh, yeah looking well the, the, the smiles are mistakeable isn't it yeah it, uh, it's just, just great to see isn't it you know when you you have a tough day and you just see a photo like that and you just think oh it's great to still have the legend around isn't it you know he's, yeah. he's just brilliant yeah as long as, long as tom, tom baker is still amongst his people sarah all is right with the world yeah. all is well yeah and again yeah i mean i know yeah he's 90 bless him he's looking a bit frail now but you know he's still mobile he, you know the the spark's still there. And like, he's not a fourth Dr. Whiz coat he's wearing as well. He's still looking as oh, cool as ever. Look at them colours. Definitely. Yeah. It's definitely Doctor Who. Um, yeah, really? yeah, just, yeah, just the biggest smile. Yeah, that, that, that made my day when I saw that. You must have come across Tom Baker on your travels, Adam, a few times, I would imagine. I have, yeah. I've been lucky enough to meet Tom. And I, I think that is such a lovely photo, actually, the, the fact that they've captured his... Big beaming smile there, mate. He looks good. I mean, he is, you know, like you said, he's in his 90s now. So I kind of get annoyed when I hear people saying, oh, he looks old or he looks frail. Yeah, of course he does. He's 91 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. He's, he's still out and about enjoying life. That's the main important thing. I think that's a great photo. I'd like to think that I can still go out and get the papers if I'm fortunate enough, if I'm privileged enough to, I to, to reach do it the now. age. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the people still still love still love Tom Baker, Charlotte. It has to be said, don't they? And, and it's been the case now for for best part of five decades. Here he is at the Blackpool Doctor Exhibition. All those years ago, this was about 1979, I think, judging by the scarf. Yeah, and it's just so lovely that now Tom will stop and he'll really get involved. Mm -hmm. Because we said there was a time in his life where where he almost wanted to distance himself because of how much of a long shadow it caused on him so now to see like you said it's clear that if somebody stops him now he will happily take the selfie he will yeah. take photos and he's like i said he's always beaming mm -hmm. he's always got a bit of a if he's not beaming he's got almost a, a, a mischievous look about him those are the two things yes. i think tom does still brilliantly and he looks yeah. gorgeous when he does yeah. so yeah it's oh, just yeah. lovely to see him still be giving his time to people yeah, because, be, because he doesn't he doesn't have to at this age. He owes oh, no God, yeah. nothing, you know. He, and he and he, again, he, and he's so humble but about it. it. When people do stop, he's like, "Oh, you remember me?" But it must wow. be quite nice. It must be quite nice for him as well mm -hmm. to think, you know, when when you do get up to those levels of age, when you think, well, when you look back and you think, these people still absolutely love me, you know, they still adore me. And and you can see in that facial expression there, he's kind of beaming from it as well, isn't he? You know, yeah. um, I don't know if he's just come out of the nail salon, but you know, <laughs> 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 maybe he's maybe he's just got up, maybe he's been out and about. I don't know. It's impossible to say, isn't it? He could have been off in time and space. I do think that Tom Baker will always be the doctor and a real life time traveller. We have one of our own, of course, a time traveller of our own. He's not always brilliant at keeping the best of time, though. That's the only the only problem. That's how you can tell is the authentic model. It's our mate from uh, from Tasmania, Matt Pot. 
Hello. I'm sorry. Hello. I got stuck in the farm, Eddie. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 It looks Happy dark. Just in time, Baker. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> Good to <laughs> see you, Matt. So, I reckon he's still doing the crosswords in the Times. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <Looks like> <laughs> <laughs> Looks very much like it. Yes, from one, well, two beaming faces to more beautiful faces and greetings over there in the live chat across YouTube, Rumble, and on Facebook. Let's go and check it out. My God, put your teeth in, Hudley. I'm Leela over 17, and you should watch Titans. <laughs> Teeth in hardly put your tongue back in after that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Type 40 Live. And hi, everyone, to Lord Thoth there with his wrench. Thank Thoth. you for your service, hey. Lord Thoth. Happy to have you back. And Mark Milford's in too. Hello, who? Family Matt. Hello. Hello. Marvelous, Hello. marvelous, marvelous. Uh, whoop, whoop. It's the sound of Type 40. It says Shah. Shah's hey, off the Shah. This is heaven knows where, Adam. She's shuffling around from place to place to place. Can't keep track of the girl. She was on the other night. Heaven knows where she is now. One state <laughs> or another. <laughs> Stay safe. She Shah. looks like she's on Sesame Street at the moment. Does she? <laughs> I, well, I think she chatted to a few Muppets in a time, yeah. <laughs> um, like that. Uh, yes, uh, hi all. Strong coffee needed. 4am here in a land wow. down under. That's where Doug Sims is too. Good to have you here, Doug. Hello, the Settle feeling. back. Hello. Relax. Greetings from San Francisco, says the time scales. I love We've got Crimply Doubloon in with a hoy shit mates too. Hello, oh, Crimply Doubloon. And uh, Darren Appen from the, all the way from the, the depths of the Darren zone. We can still hear him calling out with a hello there. Hello there. Hello, hello. Baker sort of voice. I like it. I like it. Oh, scrolling our way through the greetings and the chat. Hello, Wen. Hello, Wen. Hello, Wen. Good to you, Wen. Good to see you. Robert Payne's in as well. Hello, Robert. Just down by your beds. Robert yeah, Payne. we're all well today. <laughs> uh, ooh, and, and Gary Akers, the retro doc, is also Hello, in Gary. as well. <laughs> Hello, Ex love. Expect the uh, expect the uh, the puns to come thick and fast oh, any yeah. day. Yes. Oh, I'm Jones, sure he's having a field there. Yeah. Oh, he's so, gonna have so much fun so, tonight. Oh. <laughs> he's already Hi, working. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> Hi, Gaz. Gaz, the man's in too. Hi, Gaz. Hi, Gaz. <laughs> And we've got Tom from T Dwarf Productions. Once again, hi everyone. Hi, Sorry I'm late. I'm making bugs for the Oxford Museum. So yeah, Tom was on yeah, the show a couple of weeks ago, did a Type 40 Extra with us about his fabulous model making. Very and good. it's not just Doctor Who stuff that he works on. Obviously he does make other things. Real life creepy crawlies too. Mm -hmm. An incredible talent. Please check out that video. It was a real eye opener and Tom was great company. Let's rock and roll, says Fly Highland. Can't argue with that, Charlotte. Especially with all those capital letters, no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's all caps. It's it's very very serious, yeah. isn't it? That's don't argue with that. Don't argue with that. Hi, Kirsty. Hello, Hi, Richard Brooks. Hi, Cyberman Strikes. Hello. My eyes. My eyes. <laughs> now, I think that could be. I think that could be Shooty busting the moves on on the way in. I thought, I thought yeah. that was very civil of him. Quite I frankly, I think you yeah. traumatised quite a lot of people with that one, Dan. If I'm honest, no, uh, no uh, warning. I think that was the problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you, yeah, you it's could. suddenly turned into a clockwork orange, this yeah. stream. <laughs> <laughs> Free watershed, that was. <laughs> Hello, my lord, says Michael Hi, Q. I, he's, he's, I think he's talking to you, Matt. I think he's talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> could be. I, uh, well, we've got a comment here. It says, I want to see Ian and Sarah <laughs> twerking in honour of shooting. Why do I get shooting today? I was thinking that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, see what, Gary? You can want love. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I've not had enough to drink yet. <laughs> Greetings Hello, and salutations Tony. from Tony Big Farrell, Big T, back uh, in the house. Uh, <laughs> we have Nathan Huggins as well. Hi, Nathan. Hello. And lots more familiar names. Ticker, tickering away. As it, as it jumps right in front of my eyes, like Psycho Beats is in as well. Good to have Hello, you Psycho here. Beats. We Hello. have Simon Anthony too. Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> Simon's confused. Facebook? If you're not in the Facebook group, it won't make any difference to you at all, Simon. But there we are. You're obviously all sorted already. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see your name. There is somebody out there on Facebook who's not hit the blue link. I did warn you, Facebook user. I did warn you. Yes, yeah, so keep it all coming, everybody. There's so much to get stuck into. The good, the bad. And the ugly. Yes, I've seen the pictures too. We do have some of them. <laughs> well, we'll try and make it as painless as we as we possibly can. <laughs> so you went into a phone box with a mobile they phone. They phoned me. It was raining. <laughs> <laughs> it was pouring rain. That's why. So I went, there to so you went the rain. into a phone box was, and you had a mobile. To cry in <laughs> private. I was hoping it was a TARDIS. Swat. <laughs> 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 that's amazing i've not seen that that's so eccleston i'm sorry a northern yeah. bloke would just say that word without thinking <laughs> i thought you'd like that uh oh, yes dear. before we move on i suppose we should say a happy birthday happy 53rd birthday to the 10th the 14th and the Meta Crisis Doctor, that's David Tennant, uh, brought together here in this sort of multi-doctor picture by Alex Versnabari over on, on Deviant Art. Uh, this really tickled me. So three incarnations of the Doctor, Adam. Do, do you think that David could maybe sneak in another couple oh, at some point e in the future? Easily. I mean, I, I have to say, I really, to this day, don't like the meta crisis doctor i don't know why that still bugs me but uh the other two i have no problem with so but yeah why not throw another one in there why not 53 53 years of age and still able to run around in the uh, in the converse like he used to uh, pretty much john i think he's still able to able to do it yeah he could do it better than i could do it that's for sure so uh, yeah well good luck to him he'll be back he'll be back when he do you think I it's I think we'll see him in the new series. I think, yeah, yeah. he's certainly going to get wheeled out again. Yeah. <laughs> wheeled out. Literally. <laughs> in Will's chair. <laughs> one day. One day they may have to wheel him in, Charlotte. What do you What do you think? Yeah, he'll come back. If, if He just needs one phone call from a certain Russell and he'll come running back. Mm. <laughs> David Tennant's career has gone from strength to strength, obviously, in and around both his stints on on doctor who and the uh, the recognition and the awards seem to come thick and fast though he was a loser at the olivia awards the other evening are you really a loser when you get to spend just a few minutes with bonnie langford really? as he did on the on the green carpet outside there matt wow. oh i thought it was silla black okay <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sadly, no, sadly it's, it's, dead. They're, uh, well um uh, they're um very um <laughs> They're very matching with their clothes, aren't they? He does like no. his sparkles, doesn't he, Tennant, lately? With yeah. The has he yeah. had a lot on me? Yeah. It's like she's, she's, met, she's um, like, uh, by regenerating outside the side of him. So yeah. He does look like it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a touch. Don't, don't give him ideas, Matt. Do not give him ideas. <laughs> a touch of the Liberace in his middle age, do you think, there, Adam? Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got the hair thing going on there. So it's a nice picture of him and Bonnie, I have to say. Yeah, I, I is, think yeah. Bonnie Langford is, she's absolutely lovely. I, I've met her a couple of times and I've, I've got a lot of time for Bonnie. So I'm kind of glad that she's back involved in the show. Uh, Me so too. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a cool picture of the two of them, but yeah. It's good. I mean, yeah, Bonnie just looks absolutely stunning. And she does. Yeah, and I, I do, I do like that jacket, dude. I've got to admit, he has got good taste. But like, is it David or is it Georgia that's dressing him? I've got to I wonder. think, I think she probably tells him, if not what to wear, she certainly tells him what to say on some uh, topics. Yeah, David Tennant. Yeah, there, there are some things he's been saying of late, which I do, I do question. But obviously. He's a doctor twice over, so we do wish him a very happy birthday. He didn't win the award at the Olivier Awards the other evening, but uh, I think he's probably got got enough already. I'd say his uh, his lavatory is probably pretty well well shelled and stacked with awards, Charlotte, wouldn't you? TV Times um, Awards and all that. It, let's be fair; it'd be, it'd be more than a toilet at this point. It'd be a room with him in the house just for his <laughs> trophies. <laughs> David Tennant wasn't the only presence at the Olivier Awards this year. Freema Adjaman was there, but she was presenting. She was on pre presenting duties, looking a million dollars here. Wow. Wow. She looks like a statue, doesn't she? Who was that catching their breath? Was that you, John? Oh, yeah. She, <laughs> no, she never ages, does she? 
she does. <laughs> she again, absolutely stunning. She really. I just is. Heard, yeah, heard lots of collective gasps there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's drop dead gorgeous and never doesn't really yeah. seem to age. It's extraordinary. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to not... meet Freema. <laughs> I've never met yeah. her, and she's. I think she's one of the most underrated companions. I think Martha's a fantastic companion. Definitely. Do you think, yeah. you think we're going to see her again very soon? Um, there were. I don't know. There were lots of rumours. I'd definitely love to see her come back to the show, even if it was Same. just for an episode or two. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't want. No, after what happened no? with Donna, past companions. No. I want a wide berth just for a few years. <laughs> I can think see I'm done. <laughs> I can see where you're coming from, Sarah. Uh, yeah, I can understand uh, what you mean. But yeah, I'd I'm like convinced. I'm convinced we'll see we'll see Martha back. But one of the reasons why I like Freema so much, Adam, apart from the obvious, is that she seems pretty down to earth for somebody yeah. who's had a lot of success both here and in the states. I mean, here we see her at the Olivier Awards. There, all dressed up. She looks like she's been been carved. She looks like a human sculpture. But uh, a couple of nights before, she was at the bingo. Hey. on her instagram <laughs> that's, <laughs> she, great. That's, my, that's my kind of girl man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but i love that i love that she's so down to earth i would be more than happy to go to bingo with her honestly yeah. i'd be happy to go anywhere with her <laughs> let's make up a team yeah, yeah. what also is bingo. lovely is that she went yeah. to america of course and did quite well there and like that's yeah. not changed her like her, the yeah. way she is Exact same she was in when we when we had her as Martha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you think I wonder it's... what happens when they when they actually called out two fat ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Legs <88. 11>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we we don't know when, uh, what she won. We don't know how much she actually won that evening, or if she went home empty-handed. But she's got three three pound coins there, and she looks like she's having a blast. I'd say there's probably a, a Southern Comfort stashed under the table there. I think she probably took in her own drinks. But <laughs> yeah, have fun, Freema. This is this is the kind of person that I like to see attached to to the brand. Really, somebody who's who's down to earth, completely uh, completely open to to meeting fans. And just seems really relatable as well. Yeah, it's re really, really healthy stuff. She wasn't the only one out and about at the weekend either. That she met up with John Barrowman, Arthur Darvill, and Jenna Coleman at the North East Comic Con too. There they all are together. She's wearing a, a sort of jumpsuit this time, so very, very casual. Arthur in a terrible, terrible shirt. <laughs> Everybody's in their casuals. But I just, I just love seeing Doctor Who icons together like this because obviously some of them, uh, Freema. And John, they were on screen together, but the others weren't. I've never seen no. this collection of actors together before, no. Sarah. It's just nice. The novelty never wears yeah. off. Yeah, it just makes me so happy to see actors from different eras come together. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, can, can we just have a spin off of just these four? I'd watch yeah. that. Yeah. And what, what I what I love about that is, without going too much into it, I love the fact that they're very clearly happy to have their arms around John. Yes. That he's very yeah. much part of the gang. He's part of the group. And I think yeah. after what he went through the last couple of years, that yeah. probably helped him actually quite a lot. And it was a good thing for him to yeah. be to know that as when it comes to the, the family of the actors, he's still very much loved, like he is yes. by the fans. Yes, I, I'd say that's almost certainly almost certainly true. Uh, Crimpling de Bloon asks, is he wearing velvet trousers? So I think that's in reference to David Tennant. And yeah, I'm, I'm afraid he was. I'm afraid he was. Uh, Gary Aker says, wow, Freema is gorgeous. <laughs> and there's a lot of that kind of thing. Lots of icons here. Yeah, we've got one from Matthew Burroughs. We've got uh, one from Wendy as well. Freema looking gorgeous. Yeah, and she absolutely. looks amazing, says YW. Yes, uh, yes, just beautiful pictures. And lots and lots of smiling faces as well. Like, so I, I really do like this one. I mean, Jenna Coleman, obviously, several big hit shows up until quite recently. I think there was something she did on Amazon. And again, she's quite happy to be there in a cardi, a pair of jeans, hanging out with fellow cast members and having a picture taken. Oh, it's, it's nice. She's a big star, isn't she? Big star. Yeah. She's, again, Come she's up. not. She's not up herself. Does it? None of these. Um, unlike some people, we could mention in a bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they are just happy to be there, and, and I love seeing them. You know, rocking the kind of casual wear because you know we've all seen Jenna looking gorgeous in a glam dresses and outfits. But there's, you know, as a mum, it is it is nice to see Jenna. You know, in a cardigan and jeans. Sometimes it makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> I hate I hate to be the voice of doom, Sarah, but I 
I have met Jenna twice, and I've had two very bad experiences with her. Oh, um, um, oh yeah. go on. No, Please, it, go on. It's the only time I've ever received a barrage of hate on Twitter, so I'm always, like, really, really? scared to talk about it because I've never uh, experienced anything like the barrage I had. Uh, I love Jenna. I'm sorry. You, I've got I've got a 12-inch size. Did you, did you, sorry? We're not going to go into that, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, did then. Did you catch her on a bad day, Adam? Or? I think if it had been the first – when I first met her, I think I could have excused it because we all have off days, we all have bad mm -hmm. days. Um but the second time when I was actually paying to meet her, uh, I kind of wanted to erase that bad experience I'd had of just bumping into her and her being very dismissive and she wouldn't have a yeah. photo with me. And she just stood and waited for a taxi and was, yeah, just really, uh, she, she didn't want to know. Um, and I was the only one around. That's the thing. I kept thinking, making excuses. Well, maybe if she had a picture of me, other people would want it. There was no one within a million miles of us. We were the only people there. So I thought, yeah, probably a bad day. You know, give her a break. I thought if I pay to meet her at a convention, surely she'll be nice and smiley and whatever. And it was LFCC and just nothing. I turned to her. I got the photo with her. She didn't say a word. And I, you weren't even allowed to really sort of touch it. You had to sort of stand like this. Mm -hmm. And I just said, uh, it's, I wanted some interaction. I just wanted to get something from her because I'd already had this bad experience. So mm -hmm. I was just like, it, it, it's nice to see you today. Nice to meet you. And she, she literally, she's this close to me. She just went. Yeah. She just went. She didn't say no. a word. She didn't even acknowledge me. That's and I just, I just walked That's off and got my picture and was like, I just cannot believe it. I don't know. I just, it could be me. I could have been unlucky, but I just, well, and no, the she, thing, I, I met her a few years ago. You weren't manly I had enough good, for her. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good experience with her. And, you know, I got oh. a photo where she let me put my, my arm around her. And I'm like, wow. well, to be honest, I was going to get that shot, whatever, whether she liked it or not. I was getting my arm around her in a photo. <laughs> Restraining order, be damned. It depends on where the I hand went. Two hours. <laughs> well, I know she did She, she did have a bad experience at a con. Was it last year or the yeah, year she, before? I, I think it's several years anything. ago. This is the thing, though. Their, their fans say this stuff, but who? I don't believe it. Like, they make up all these excuses for it. I really don't believe mm. half the stuff that they say, oh, she, someone asked her to sign a nude picture, but rubbish i don't believe it for a minute i think it's just you know what you know having what, experience Adam, there, I, I'm sorry family. about that now we know what you, matt's doing after the show tonight yes <laughs> you, you know oh, what, Adam, come on. your your journey there from from point a to b to c with that story Apart from, I've never, I've never met her, never been around her, but I'm starting to now. I've heard so many people actually say similar things to that Shit. you've just confided. More bad experiences than yeah. good ones. I am starting to come around to your way of thinking, Adam, that maybe she's, it's not really her thing. It doesn't make, make, make her a bad person. Mm. just means it's not necessarily her thing. She's not comfortable with it. And she either mm. does it for a few quid or, or for whatever, whatever, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was when i first did it it was several years back and it, she was in the show at the time so maybe mm. it's a, a different scenario then whereby she had to be involved with it um mm. so maybe maybe it was a mm. i don't know a contractual thing where she had to go to it at the time and mm. put on the act Could be. that she was enjoying it more than she actually was but since she's been out of the show you're right, it could be a completely different scenario. The, th the thing is, I'm sure people do have good experiences, right? So I'm not like laying into her. And as I said, it was just a bit of yeah. a shock for me to receive a barrage of hate from her fans on Twitter. This is a couple of years ago. So I, yeah. it's made me very wary of like actually posting anything because, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, Dan, what sort of irks me about it, and it's kind of why I'm speaking up about it, is because it does affect my enjoyment now every time I see her on screen. I almost, oh, I just I wish I, I wish I hadn't met her mm. because I wouldn't, uh, I liked her and I liked Clara and everything. But mm. now I just look at it and I'm like, mm, yeah, even see yeah. that picture, I'm like, mm, no, yeah, I it's ruined my that's experience. That's a pity. That's a yeah, real pity. It is. That's kind of why I'm hesitant to meet Freema because I assume she'll be lovely. But yeah. if she's get, not, every time I see her on screen, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. You know? I get what you mean though, because a few years ago, I met someone from an American show. And they were clearly in a bad mood and were foul to everybody and didn't wow. want to know, was really stand off it, was having a row with the staff. And I went away mm. from it and I couldn't watch that show for a while because yeah. although it's a character, I was thinking, 
yeah, I've had a bad experience and I'm seeing mm. them on the screen. So mm. I, it took me a few years actually to to get back to watching it. So it does does affect you. It's that old saying of never meet your heroes. And I think for the most yeah. part, you, you, it's always worth the risk. You know, I mean, if you were to yeah. see Tom Baker on the street, you've got to go up and chat to him. And there's a 99% <laughs> chance you're going to have a great experience with Tom because Tom is just yeah. exactly how you'd imagine him. But you never know. He may have not got the crossword right that day. He may be having a bad day. Everyone has them. So it's yeah. always a risk, but it, it can affect your enjoyment of the show. Um, and sadly, that's, that's sure. the case of me and Jenna. Shah in the live chat says, Adam, exactly, especially if you've paid yeah. to see someone, you can at least have the good graces to to smile. Well, yeah, yeah, especially what they charge as well. Oh, I mean, God, it is yeah. obscene. Mm -hmm. And they're actors. So it should, it should be, be. It should be quite easy to act that you're having a great time. You know, you, you would think so. Uh, <laughs> Cybermat Strikes advises never meet your heroes unless you like them. Somebody who met his hero just this week as well at an airport on their on their way over to Calgary, I believe, was John Barrowman when he bumped into well this hero. Hey, <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> And Sylvester McCoy always looks amazing, no matter what he's wearing. Yeah. He's like the coolest. Yeah. How old is he now? Is he 80 now? 80. He's wow, the coolest 80-year-old he? I know. He's he the is. only one yeah. that has ever acted like a doctor. Like, when you actually meet him, he yeah. acts like the, his doctor. Mm. It's it's the craziest thing. It's like he's <laughs> doing an act in front of you. It's fantastic. And And he's always, he's one that is always a really nice guy to meet. You know, I've never heard anybody say a bad thing about him. It, it, he's just a friendly guy, isn't he, when you go up to him? He actually, um, uh, he's the only only person I've seen that actually takes the time to make sure mm. that everything was perfect for the person. So he will actually mm. go through, when, when people have photos with him and that, he will actually mm. go through the photos himself Is while it? they're getting wow. printed to make yeah. sure that they're okay, you know? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's that's a top cool, guy. Though. There he is. Yeah, he was very uh, charismatic when we saw him at Hooverville last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Akers asks, what's that on his phone? That's his grandchild. I can't remember. I think he's got a grandson, so he's always got that yeah, on the front, on the front not, of his phone. There. It's not an upside-down kid taking a photo, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be. We have, what, a, what a fabulous picture there of, uh, yeah, the biggest, most heroic doctor. Yeah, I think probably yeah. it could be. Oh, yeah, it oh. probably is. <laughs> Before talking about meeting heroes, like, I just wanted to relay this. Well, it wasn't really an experience because it never happened. But at the weekend, I was meant to be meeting Daphne Ashbrook Ooh, at hmm. the Doctoral Merchandise Museum. Uh, I was going to go with Nikki. Hello, Nikki, if you're watching. Love. Unfortunately, Nikki wasn't very well. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't able to go. Um, very disappointing. However... The organisers, so that's David Howe and his wife Sam, got in touch with both me and Nikki. And Daphne has actually sent us a fo signed photo. I've got it here. Oh, it wow. came this morning because we couldn't. And it said, Dear Sarah, thanks so much. Love, Daphne Ashbrook. But yeah, and it came this morning. Okay, let's, let's get this up on, on yeah. screen so people can see. Um, so oh, just, how, how lovely yeah, is that? And I, so nice. And I will admit, I did tear up a little bit because it, it isn't what you expect. You know, I just thought, oh, well, you know, it, it's just an experience that it wasn't That's meant really to lovely. be. And I just, yeah, I just want to thank David and Sam and Daphne so much for, for doing that, you know. See, that's it's a fantastic a organisation. That really is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a photo taken with um, Fraser Hines once and it was lost in the eddy. I never, ever saw it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I've just, I've mm -hmm. always, you know, I've always regretted the fact that, you know, mm. they they just really dropped the ball in that and they didn't, you know, they, they just didn't give me my photo. So, you know, oh, I've still got that memory fun. with him but yeah. um and, and a signed a signed picture, but not not an actual photograph, and that's really I mean, you know what yeah. what a contrast between somebody who can barely find the time to flash you a smile mm. when you're there stood in mm. front of them and someone who will, yeah. will do that for you. And they've got no idea whether they will ever meet you, but they couldn't meet you that day. I think that, that says a lot. We've got this picture as well from Daphne and Paul there when they, they got together at a convention. This was the Bedford Comic Con a couple of weeks ago. So they were reunited there along with um, a couple of, well, one larger friend and one very small friend. <laughs> yeah. Authentic Tardises from the TV yes. movie. But I thought that, I thought you'd enjoy that. Oh, what a fabulous end. I know you were, you were really upset about that, Sarah. So 
it's a nice happy ending and something for you to frame as well what that's that's fantastic yeah that's lovely yeah because i i mean i remember watching the tv movie as an 11 year old it was the first who that i'd ever encountered before the the reboot and I, yeah i was looking forward to telling her that and so yeah so the the 11 year old inside me was like yay <laughs> yeah it's lovely uh daphne ashbrook sent you a photo how sweet it says on comics and uh, that's something yeah. to frame says kirsty absolutely yeah, right absolutely. fabulous says crimpling the balloon and a uh, tardis time says wish we could have seen more of grace in the show it'd be brilliant mm -hmm. if she could come back wouldn't it it'd be brilliant if paul could come back come to yeah. think of it, that would be even better bring them <laughs> back together that's that's what i say uh, Daf daphne was absolutely lovely when i met her at cons mm -hmm. says gary acres and those TARDIS models are so good, mm -hmm. says Fly Highland. Uh, hello, all. I hope all is well, says Vanessa Law. Well, it's even hello, better Vanessa. now that you're here, Vanessa. Happy to yes. have you here. Hello, Vanessa. Hello, yeah, Vanessa. And we've barely even got warmed up, too, have we? So, yes, if you're enjoying this and uh, our uh, chat through the uh, our scandalous <laughs> encounters with Doctor Who personalities, the good, the bad, and the ugly, then maybe you'll enjoy our ramblings across the Doctor Who podcast Type 40 as well. So you can find that up at our home feed, type40.podbean.com. Our most recent episode is our preview of season one of all new Doctor Who starring Shooty Gatwa. We had Ian Levine as our guest panellist on that one. And you can catch up on all the other all the other episodes of the show, stretching back, oh, how many years have we been doing it now? Six, seven years, stretching all the way back over there to our home feed or across all major podcatchers someone who couldn't be here for this one of course is the mega geek um he did send a message <laughs> <laughs> as we step into the breach this artwork courtesy of called grayus over on x ian's getting fan art now what's going I on know. Oh. That's so not fair. <laughs> yeah so he's out filming on his web series at the moment i understand he's in some sort of dank alleyway somewhere shouting at poor actors oh, my god man. no wonder they don't smile so yes uh ian the mega geek he needs the money come on you're <laughs> gonna <laughs> <get> <laughs> <thinking>. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic stuff, but I'm certain I'll be back on Type 40 Live at some point in the near future. Okay, time for the time for the main event, I think, everybody. Look, I am, generally speaking, looking forward to this season of Doctor Who, Adam. That's the Ooh. disclaimer. I, I am. Eight weeks of brand new adventures. And, you know, my childhood hero is, is back on screen. I am an optimist by nature. But sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes things happen that just push us perhaps a little too far where we can we can really begin to question what we may be about to get. This is Philip Roy playing the Doctor. And I'm Mandy Rose and I play Jenny. For the Doctor Who fan film, Doctor Who Meets the Scorpion, this is the Type 40 podcast. <laughs> Yes, so uh, all this week, the publicity campaign has been stepping up. Not the kind of things that we, we want to see, such as the posters and the trailers, but more of the fluff and the nonsense and, and the hyperbole. Now, I can accept that a lot of these things are necessary evils of any kind of marketing, John. I think that that's a that's the truth of the of the modern age. We all, anybody who's in any kind of business whatsoever, you know, whether you run the business or not, we all understand that you've got to reach your punters, you've got to go speak to them, you've got to say something to get them on board. But yeah. it's just that I'm not sure that what's going on with Doctor Who at the moment is is right somehow. I mean, obviously we've got a, we've got a new doctor, and every time you know, he's still new. Yeah, so he's, he made his first on-screen appearance several months ago. But when I, when I look at Shooter Gatwa, I, I think to myself, well, you know, how many of us have yeah. landed a job that we've told ourselves before the interview would be our dream job? You know, had that opportunity drop out of the sky that seems too good to be true and even been sort of handed something where we couldn't really fail you know it was it's yours to lose and the audience is yours to lose as well in the case you know, if, if you're an actor but in shooty's case as well taking the taking the lead in this show at this precise time here's a chance to make a lot of people very very happy and have a ton of fun 
whilst also being paid to, to do so. Talented and fortunate people squander fantastic opportunities all the time. <laughs> that's, that's sad enough. I think, I think that's probably always been the case and always will be, particularly when one is young. But what's harder to witness is when a person, a person who could be so right, comes so close to having it all, to becoming a national, if not an international star and hero, and then cocks it right up. Now, <laughs> whether whether that's because they were never right for it in the first place or whether they're being mismanaged, uh, I, I don't know. Y you tell me. But, you know, Shifty Atwa, he's obviously wanted to be an actor all his life. I mean, here's this picture of him acting at school there. You can see he probably was always going to stand out. That's not standard issue school uniform, Sarah, is it? Wherever you go to school. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's the most ordinary I've ever seen him. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite sweet to see pictures like this of somebody who's now this you know, big. Well, yeah, it's lovely to see. You know, if, it, if it's always been his dream to act, and it's been, you know, good, you know, it's fantastic that you know it, he's got this far, and he's you know he's made it and got got to do what he wants and gets paid for it. I mean, that's the dream. Do you, do you know what I would say as well? We, we, we saw a picture earlier on of Tom with hmm. someone having a photo, beaming, making that person's day. That's what Tom did when he was a doctor. He, 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 he always made sure that the kids were respected. And I think famously he said that he would never smoke in front of the kids, you know, and, and, and yeah. he was very, very focused on making sure that he was respecting that role. What we've got now is somebody who I don't know even if I, I can blame them now. I think it's someone above them, like a handler, who is just completely missing a trick with it and controlling them and saying, this isn't a good idea. We're just about to launch the new series. We need to rein this back in a bit because we, we could potentially risk alienating an audience by doing these sort of interviews. But that's where we are now aren't we it's uh, comparing that to how tom it, tom was and how he still is to, to how yeah, shooty yeah. is but i mean is it just me is it they don't respect the role of, of the doctor as much as they used to is that part i of think it as some well? of it is the nature of fame john I, obviously yeah. shooty's 32 years of age now he's been he's been the doctor contractually for over two years you know they cast him well no actually they revealed him to the to the public easter 2022 so i think he was cast the previous christmas uh, he brings out of this really popular netflix series an ensemble show which i've still never seen adam apparently he really stood out in this ensemble cast and he'd been hand-picked by returning show and russell t davis mm. and russell's instincts historically never really seemed to be at fault so i think we had every reason to have a lot of confidence in this and yet there's something about it that they're fumbling the ball here adam uh, he's given two interviews this week to two separate publications two separate you know big entertainment magazines that do tend to get you know whatever they print tends to get reported and passed along through the entire system so the the quotes will turn up absolutely everywhere that's the nature of the beast too and those interviews sometimes take place over a few hours don't they and, and what we see in print is sometimes only a fraction of the conversation. Uh, in this instance, he's been talking to Entertainment Weekly oh, and, to, and to Attitude. <laughs> yeah. uh, but they're two pretty big magazines. Entertainment Weekly doesn't really exist in print anymore, but Attitude, but Attitude does. They're two pretty big magazines. Ideal opportunities to sort of, to not raise the profile of Doctor Who oh. as such, but certainly to ring the alarm bells that it's, that it's coming back. And yet, and yet the the photographs, the quotes that come out of it, they're difficult reading, Adam. I mean, have, have you been picking up on all of this? Because these quotes are everywhere, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I'm just furious he's wearing the same thing I wore on my wedding day. I mean, it's, <laughs> what's going on? No, I, to be serious, Dan, I, I'm going to go back to what John was just saying because I'm looking at the mm. pictures from the magazine, from the photo shoot. I'm looking at the quotes from it that I've seen and I just think John's right it's 
you've got to ask yourself who's advising him who's you know the people around him are obviously telling him this is great and this is what you yeah. want to do and i think there is a section of fandom that are absolutely lapping this up mate you go on twitter there's you know yeah. there is an audience that are yeah. loving this but that's the audience they're chasing and it's quite i think quite a niche audience i think the problem is it's also alienating a lot of you know, uh, of the sort of old school fans, if you like, who are looking at him thinking he looks a bit ridiculous, you know? Right. So, are they the audience that watch Doctor Who or want to watch the show? That's what I keep coming back to, Adam. It's fine to, um, to amuse people on their social media feed or to or to titillate them or whatever response that you mm. want to get but are these bookers actually going to watch the friggin' show that's <laughs> that's what well, it comes down to are they going to watch the show are they going to buy the merchandise are they going to buy the blu-ray sets are they going to buy the dvds probably not no. it's the it's the old school fans like us who who have invested in this show for years they want to collect everything and want to consume everything that's thrown at us and to be honest, recently they're making it much more difficult. As I said, they seem to be aiming very much for this younger audience, which, you know, okay, fine, but you've got to try and include everyone. Mm. You know, Doctor Who has been around for 60 years. You know, it's a big institution. It's, it's got a huge fan base that want to love the show. And we seem to, there's a big section of us that seem to be being constantly pushed away. And I don't understand <laughs> it, you know. And I mean, so, but I do think it's the people around them, mate. I think when Shoot You was cast, I think it was quite promising, you know, the stuff he was saying. Yeah. He was talking about what he wanted to bring to the role and the character of the Doctor and how much he wanted to play this part. This all sounded great. Jump forward to where we are now, and he's talking about twerking in front of Daleks and wearing this sort of thing. And I've got to ask myself, what, what's happened between there and now? Who's telling him this is a good idea? Yeah, uh, the, the... Well... The viewing public did get to see him, so it's sometimes hard to remember, John, that this character has been on screen. It's it's almost as if it didn't happen. We've all been uh, sort of uh, we've had our memories wiped by the Men in Black <laughs> in the last four or five months. So his era started, but it hasn't started. But the viewing public got to see him on Christmas Day. But I suppose a lot of people are either tired or hungover, or they're doing the washing up, or the kids are playing, making a lot of noise. You know they. The fact is, he didn't make that much of an impact, did he? And all we've no. seen in the interim, in the in the months in between, is well, I hate to say it, but lots of preening and poncing around in glossy magazines and on red carpets. It seems to me that he's kind of doing the lap of honour before he's he's run the race. Uh, mm. and, and for me, I think it is just a mirror of what happened with the Jodie Whittaker series mm. that were coming. You had. You had, you know, you had her reading out why people weren't happy with her being cast as a doctor with mm. smug faces. You had the, the glass ceiling things coming down. Mm. And they did all of that. And they're just repeating it. With, yeah, mm. they're repeating it with Shooty. And and as much as they want to chase that audience, that audience doesn't exist or a small portion of it. And, mm. and, and, and what has been said, you know, they aren't going to buy the merchandise. You know they'll watch the show once and that'll be it and and it's it's just you know uh, if they do a multi-story doctor in the future you'll have a few doctors talking about trying to solve the problem and they'll go right where's the where's the 15th doctor oh he's twerking against the tardis you know? <laughs> <laughs> what, what gets me is this like the total disconnect between yeah. what it should be aiming at and also, it's a family show that's on the biggest family family friendly <laughs> streaming service of Disney Plus, and then you've got him looking like just I don't know. It's like some kind of love child between Madonna and Sam Smith, and it's just really, really bizarre. And it's just like, how is this? So yeah, okay, it's gonna spread on social media like wildfire for a couple of days. But most people are just pointing and laughing. And I'm really concerned that we're heading towards, you know, the late 80s here where Doctor Who's going to be an embarrassment. It's not a, um I've already had a, some, like, know me friends sending me things. Going, oh, this is your new Doctor Who. Ha, ha, ha. Mm. And uh, how ridiculous is this? And it's very, yeah. This is, yeah, this is what I said a couple of weeks ago. I said the problem is Shooter's getting more famous for his outfits than his actual acting. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. He's getting more headlines and more press because of his outrageous, diva, fabulous sort of persona he clearly wants to portray on the red carpet. And now in, we're seeing it in some of these interviews that are dropping this sort of rush of media. Here's my problem. They're not marketing him as a doctor. No. no, yeah. no they are no, marketing no. him as this sexy, lovely, fabulous guy. That's how they're marketing him. Mm. What I want, yep. I don't care if he wants to look fabulous when it comes to promotion for this show. He can mm. do that on his own Instagram. He mm-hmm. can do that in his own time. Go for it, shooty, because that's you. That's you have every right to do it. But when you're doing pran, um, planned press and very precise, you're talking to this outlet for Doctor Who, you're doing this interview in preparation to launch the series. You need, your number one focus should be show me the Doctor. Show me yeah. a hint as to what you're going to bring to this role. Mm. And he's not. He's doing... But then it's weird. I watched an Entertainment Weekly video where he went through all the doctors, like in a very two minute, like tiny yeah. space. And he spoke about um, his doctor at the end. Because I thought, that's interesting. Let's hear him actually speak about the role, which is what I, mean, I that, think. But that was all very, it was all very corporate, wasn't it? Very nicely edited. Mm. And you can see yeah. that he was reading it all. But at least they made it, Charlotte. At least it was something. It's probably the kind of thing the BBC should be making, really, rather than Entertainment mm. Weekly. Oh, yeah, the actual idea I thought was brilliant. It's him, like, touching back to the show. You can clearly mm. see he's got affection. And he's. you can tell he adores Pertwee off that video, which is lovely to see him sort of smiling yeah. and being, like, almost my genuine, doctor. Like, that seemed genuine, and I've said this before, when Shooty's speaking from the heart about this show, he comes across brilliantly. He's done it in other interviews, and I've always thought he's such a good ambassador. We've used that term before. Mm -hmm. But it got to his doctor. And one thing he said got me quite interested, and I'm like, if you do that, actually, this could be fun, and I'm actually looking forward to it which is he said his doctor's going to have charm and that's going to be almost the way he works a little bit. Mm. And actually charm, I think, could work in this role Mm. because charm can be lots of different things. It can be subtle. It can be in your face. It can be manipulative. It Mm. can be charisma. Like there's so many things you could do with that concept for a doctor. So I was like, yep, shooting, loving that idea. But then he basically admitted that he's going to be flirtatious. And my problem is with that. New Who, in school reunion, really well established that the idea of romance and having that connection, the doctor's got lots of issues. Mm -hmm. He said it brilliantly to Rose. He said, you wither and you die. Imagine watching somebody you love go yeah. through that. Yeah. So the doctor knows he can't get, he can have friends and he, he loves his companions, but when it gets to, like I said, romance and love and in the more intimate way, he knows he can't do it. River was the exception. So now I can't, for me, a doctor who's got that idea with Tennant, and I think it got carried on throughout Matt's run because he was very... Whenever Amy tried to flirt, you could see he didn't have a clue what to do. And then with Capaldi, it was very... Obviously, with River, you saw it, but it's very it's grown up. It's definitely developed, hasn't it? That that mm. instinct, that take on the character, the, the framing of that side to his, to his nature. I mean, the Doctor's personality may change, may shift... But his actual nature and his values, and I don't yeah, think his priorities. His essence, that, yeah. That's my point. The uh, it, he has evolved, but still the core essence of he knows he can't get that. He like for me, if Shooty's going to be flirty, it throws away all that love, all that really incredible writing of Rome of of the, what the Doctor thinks about romance. Because mm-hmm. if he's just going to flippantly flirt off the cuff at people then you then actually you romance and love and that stuff doesn't hold the weight it used to to this character 
it doesn't have all that sort of really interesting uh, ideas about it. He can just flirt. He can just say what he wants to people it now, and that. Well, well, he becomes and he becomes like every other hero in every other TV show. Yeah, well, this is yeah. literally what I was. Television. This is literally what I was about to say. You've suddenly lost what made the Doctor so unique as a character, and it it, it just becomes like everybody else. And you know, and from what he's saying, he just sounds like Captain Jack. Yes, just find the Captain Jack because he's humanoid. Is it, but not for a time lord, not for this alien. And you know, the doctor is so it's almost like he's above all that. Yeah, it's kind of on his radar, but he's much you know, he's got the you know intellectual stimulation. There's so much going off his mind yeah. all the time, and he's just interested in the adventure and romance is you know the last thing on his he's mind. looking at the bigger picture isn't he yeah um, I mean, for, for all for all that you've just said and though and the, some of the stuff that he's coming out with when i see pictures like the one we've got up on screen it's a brand new yeah. picture from space babies the opening episode they look like two best friends mm. who uh, yes. who trust one another they've probably yes. just been through absolute hell for 50 minutes together this is the doctor and sarah jane this is the uh the doctor and clara this is the doctor and the doctor and joe this is that relationship in the 21st century and yet there, there was some of that presence in the christmas special without a doubt it was there but the broader culture around the show and the things that are being said are exactly as you described charlotte and you do wonder i mean he said here we, we, you talk about that video the the one where he goes through all the doctors and you think oh it's just some sort of puff piece that they're thrown together adam but in the in the interview that went along with this he said that um when he found out that he that he got the part no i beg your pardon actually when he found out that he was going for an audition and they were they were casting for doctor who because it was a part that he'd expressed an interest in to his agent he threw himself into into real research he says he locked himself in his house and re-watched as much of the revival series as he possibly could. He says from about six in the morning until six at night, he binged every episode of Eccleston's and Tennant's runs, uh, paying particular attention to Davies' blend of humour, uh, heart and sci-fi. And the quote I've got from him says, I just fell in love with it. It was so easy to put my phone in in airplane mode and just not reply to anyone because that show was taking up all of my attention. He's received it. He's seen what we saw 20 years ago, Adam. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that that's great. And I think this, this is the thing, mate. I don't know that Shooty is necessarily going to be the problem. I think he's got what it takes to be a great doctor. You know, I think that, that what we need to be concerned about is how they're writing him and the mm -hmm. direction they're going to push him in because he'll just, you know, he may have encompassed all that stuff from all the things he's watched, but if what's on the page is telling him to be flamboyant and, and all this sort of stuff, that's what he's going to do. And he can do that in spades and that's all great. But is that the doctor? You know? This is what's worrying yeah. me, Adam, because of the previous interview when he was talking about his costume and he'd got good instincts about what his costume should be. Yeah. And he went to the costume designer and they basically persuaded him to do you know pick more things and that's what i really do think he's being mismanaged here and he may have these instincts i'm really glad the show's grabbed him i mean oh the bloody stuff Far better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um so you know he, he gets my respect for that um but yeah i think if he's coming with these instincts and they're not being allowed to use them or being told that isn't on him that and i've said before that if this series is a success it will be in spite of Russell and not because of Russell. I think Russell and the team, I think the team surrounding this is what's going to cause all the problems. I don't think it's necessarily yes. due to. It, it, al yeah. it already is. I mean, with Whitaker, we've got somebody who was, who was grossly miscast and then mm -hmm. terribly mismanaged. Here, I believe we have someone who I believe still that this may be the right man 
at the right time. But I've now got this sinking feeling that we're never really going to know because the whole thing is being slightly mismanaged. You, you mentioned the, the costume, Sarah, and this does get brought up in the Entertainment Weekly article. He says that, uh, yeah, he went to them with that um, with whole idea, a whole concept of what he wanted. And they were, it was a, a preppy look that celebrated uh, universities and black colleges from, from way back in history. And, uh, you know, it's, it's got sort of the buttoned up collars and the waistcoats and lots and lots of tweed. And he says, I went in and I showed the producers all these sketches and things. We've had him on the show before. So I went in and I showed the producers and they were like, this is lovely, but what else have you got? And he was sent to to see the costume designer, uh, somebody called Pam Down. And together, it says, they dreamt up an entire TARDIS closet for the doctor. Shooty says, she laid out her sketches on the table and I saw kilts and skirts and all kinds of gender pushing, societal pushing out, pushing outfits. And I was like, yeah, let's do all of them. See, this is somebody who's being mismanaged. His instincts yep. were correct, and he's being led down down the wrong path here with this character, John. I think this could end up being tragic if it carries on. What do you, what do you think? Uh, I I think so. I, I I think he has definitely been mismanaged, and I think sadly, you know, the first thing I say before I say what I'm going to say is mm. none of us hate Doctor Who. All of us want it to work, and we want it to be a smash hit. But they're making it very very difficult for people to engage with it. That's the mm. trouble now. And I think you're in, now in a situation where you've got someone that, from what I hear, he he's a very good actor. He could play the role. But I think we're just going to get a copy and paste one-dimensional character imitating the Doctor, not actually putting his stamp on that role for those six, ep uh, six episodes. So uh, um, I, don't, I don't know um, what... What we're going to get with it well i've got a feeling i know what i'm going to get with it and i hope i'm wrong i've never hoped i'm, I'm wrong more in my life you can but, see um, why you can see why john can't you why people like nathan huggins in the live chat here on youtube says he's no doctor who he has no respect for the role completely miscast he hasn't got the experience to be yeah. in the lead role i would argue that by by the evidence of these interviews which yeah they are curated yeah he does respect the role um, and I, I say the jury's out whether he's miscast or, or not. My instinct are, is that he isn't. But you can see why people like Nathan feel as they as they are, because all the signals for the general public are that, you know, why have they got this guy? What is going on? Who is this character again? Because one of these may look a little like Doctor Who, uh, maybe, but then he looks something completely different the following week, and he's... He's wearing outfits that push gender, societal, not... What? This guy should have more to think about, more to do, than to wonder about whether his skirt matches his socks or or whatever. I don't know. It just all seems like trivial nonsense. You could say that the Doctor has been... Not exactly a clothes horse, Matt, in the past, but the, the third Doctor took a lot of pride in his appearance, didn't he? He was, he was the dandy. So that you, we've seen that side of the Doctor before, but he was very, very masculine, John Pertwee. All the Doctors, all the Doctors, right the way through to Capaldi, have been either masculine or patrician characters. What's wrong with that, Matt? I, I honestly think that um, Shooty is more attuned to being a, a companion, um, everything that I've seen up to this point, all the trailers, and that I'm actually waiting for the Doctor to show up. I, I'm just saying, oh, why am I seeing the companions? I and then I realize, and then I remember, and then I remember, oh yeah, he's the Doctor, and I'm like, uh, it. There's just nothing there that even, even screams Doctor to me. And as as a Rabbi, I've got to give credit to the Rabbi. He said they've literally employed Zoolander. To be the doctor. Yeah, that's, that's, all. that's the rabbi from the planet on YouTube. They have. And it's <laughs> it's just so sad the fact that he can't he's put himself so much into this in into the character of the doctor that it doesn't reflect the doctor anymore. And so I think I, I think he's totally and utterly missed the mark. And um I understand where he's coming from with the whole closing. He thinks he's being 
cool and hip and up to date with everybody and you know stuff you if you don't like it but i it's everything that i didn't want you see what i'm saying though Matt? that's not you see what we're saying though matt that's not his first instinct as an actor as somebody who by his own admission went away and watched hours and hours of it his first instinct wasn't any of this (laughs) no but the fact of the matter is that yes he is being mismanaged there's no doubt in that whatsoever. The whole thing has been mismanaged for friggin' seven years. Mm. Even even before then, it was starting to get mismanaged. But I think there's too many cooks in the kitchen, and, and unfortunately... And, and now, Matt, I think what we're seeing this time, as well as something that we didn't see before, uh, the Sense of Fear mentions it in the live chat here, watching on YouTube, an objectification and sexualization of Doctor Who itself. Is that over-egging it, Charlotte? What, I no, because... I going to take it this way. Like I said, for me, back to the flirting idea, that's making it sexualised. Mm. Especially as the rumour beforehand, I, I heard, was this flirting, which now he's confirmed, is going to be in the vein of Captain Jack. Mm. And that was not innocent in the slightest, if you remember how Jack would flirt with people. <laughs> It was very clear as day what why he was flirting and what he thought in that moment. So it's it's bringing it's bringing sexual 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 it's bringing the idea of sex and sort of that appeal, which none of the doctors they can be dishy. We've talked about that god mm-hmm. like we've talked about Capaldi with his sort of grey locks and mm-hmm. how the girls can love that, but it's never been a core part of the character. It's just been a bit of a flair that certain actors have brought to the role. It's just not been baked into the writing. And it feels like it's been now baked into the writing of this doctor, that he's going to flirt, he's going to wear certain outfits, which very clearly emphasise certain bits of him. It's becoming provocative. That's the word. Yes. And it's it's wrong. This is a children's show. This is a family show. It's making things uncomfortable. Uh, I don't want to see a doctor with gender bending nonsense. There's enough of that in real life and on social media. Um, you know, I want to go back to escapism. A lot of people want to go back to escapism. And this stuff's being infected into it. And it is the higher ups, you know, this this costume designer, it's obviously her intent to get this nonsense into it. Where, where it, it doesn't yeah. need to be. There's nothing wrong with, you know, whatever outfit Shooty had chosen. And some of his outfits look As really good. a starting good. point, Sarah, as well. I'm not saying that they had to say, yeah, we'll go with that, because Whitaker went in with some bloody awful picture, yes, and did. they did not They didn't argue. They just went and run up what she <laughs> said, and we ended up with that monstrosity flailing around on screen for years. It was a complete... It was ridiculous. Yeah. But here... They say this is a, this is just as bad in many respects because they've just they haven't taken that because it's him that's going to wear the stuff. This yeah. is what I liked about how they seem to work with Capaldi. Oh. You, know, you can see he just feels like uber confident and he's yeah. completely meshed with the character. Adam, you can you can see it in the other actors. You can see it in their eyes. They feel completely confident in who they are. They feel confident in their role and completely sort of in sync with what their version of the character. Is, is going to be in these in these two uh, photo shoots this week we're given two brand new looks two screen outfits he's going to wear both of these outfits on screen with, we've since discovered as the doctor so the outfits that they, they're just they're going into double figures now and here he is in action wearing wearing one of them check this out if you haven't seen it already All I've got to say to that, 
<laughs> there's no glass ceilings this time. There's, it's time, Lord stuff. It's a big clock, big hands. There's an air of confidence about it. There's a bit of tech. An air but... of confidence? What the, the hell was it about? The smugness is off the charts. My <laughs> That's... goodness. It's a shit-eating grin, isn't it? This it's rather than oh, it's... rather than the sort of the wry look of somebody who ha who has secrets. Tom Baker always says that the doctor should look like he's got secrets, doesn't he, John? Mm. This guy looks like the only secret he's got is what he's stashing under the, underneath that kilt. Oh, well, I think he's getting <laughs> to the point where we're going to have an article where he doesn't want to hide what he's got under his quilt because he's done everything else, hasn't he? <laughs> you know? I didn't, I didn't realise he was actually going to wear that in the show. I assume that was just Neither for like, the photo shoot. No. Where, did you, where uh, did you find that? This is... Uh, it's out there. That these are yeah. these are new, yeah, actually going to be screen-used outfits. Do you want a closer look, Adam? Yes, see please. if you want to add something to your ideas. wardrobe. Let me get oh, some ideas. Is. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there you go. All right. Uh, <laughs> you want to up, upgrade your wardrobe. There he is holding the Sonic here. Yeah, this is a look for the Doctor. I mean, you could say that the tartan matches the scarf that Sylvester wore in Time and the Rani, but that's probably about all I've got on the positivity front. <laughs> but, but like Matt said, though, it's, I think it, if anything, he looks more like a multiverse version of Jamie McCrimmon. Not the doctor. <laughs> 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 it's Lex's oh, companion. Yeah. I don't. No, I don't like it. It, it just looks silly. I mean, oh, oh my god. god! That I'm, clock I'm, thing is so stupid. That clock thing. I'm like, are, are you serious? Is I this? Think it, it, what? What? Uh, what yeah. it made me think of it's was very. The it was very Tom Han Hanks in Big, isn't it? Sorry, yeah, Sarah. It made me think of the, you know, the video for Radio Gargo when Freddie Mercury's faffing about with that phone. <laughs> yes. And he's even and he's even wearing red. And I just thought, look, Shooter, I know you think you're special, but Freddie Mercury did this 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. It's not. Mm. It's not. All I, I, I see think, what... is a pretty. He's very. He's gorgeous. He's a very attractive man. You know clearly made it as a model as well as an actor you can see why he was casting barber but I'm, I'm just not seeing the doc i just see a model that's yeah. the problem that's a pose that is a fashion model pose and I fashion think easter is the word that keeps coming up in the live chat here charlotte yeah. and and the thing is we've said this as well the doctor works best when he's just a step out of time from everybody else that he's just that sort of He's just human enough that he can blend in, but there's something you know underneath the sur surface almost. I've got a worry that Shooty's going to be too, feel like a bloke you just meet on the street, that or that you just open a magazine. That's probably the better comparison with Shooty, actually. Mm -hmm. That he's not an alien. He's not this sort of, like I said, just on the surface, like put somebody trying to be human in the best way no the, you're just going to look at him and think oh there's a fashion model who's just walked on the screen because all what... the posing here is fashion that's clearly the world he's posing from here like if you think about other doctors like what we've talked about it like the hand acting or the poses they do they feel like <laughs> something out there. <laughs> that is so great. I'm tired after working. Yeah, that is great. You're saying, yeah, that's that, so the, yeah, but yeah, but even then, he feels awkward in that photo. Um, <laughs> Russ, uh, first doctor, doesn't he, Bill? He doesn't look yeah. like he's yeah. comfortable. It is, it is different, of course, yeah. it is, and that's what I mean. I think Shooty's got the risk here of just blending into modern day fashion culture more than a time lord from gallifrey i'm going to play devil's advocate here but yeah, he's very got flamboyant a, isn't he yeah, has it got to a point though with they know that the show isn't as successful as it used to be so now with yes. diminishing returns They've they are now for trying, quite a while john yeah and they're trying these gimmicks to say this might get us a few extra viewers here and a few extra viewers there well, well, without John, actually figuring out that that is not going to happen. On Monday's, on Monday's show, when we had uh, Shah was on and Will Hadcroft and Simon Horton, we, we were all in talking about Doctor Who exhibitions. And we got a brand new quote from Russell then where he talked about the Doctor Who experience and why that closed and his hopes and the likeliness of something like that happening again. And obviously, he talked a good game. Russell tends to even now mostly talk a pretty good game, I think, Matt. 
but his the way he was seeing it was if it was full of ifs it was if people watch if people if kids buy the toys if kids like it it was all it, it's all a, a flurry of ifs until until they get there mm. but it all it all hinges on just as you were saying doesn't it it's it's, it's just yeah. got to connect he's I got to connect if, at the end of the day yeah yeah uh, i wonder if russell is really running the show i i really do and maybe like i said there's just too many cooks and um it needs a vision and i i see the vision going everywhere there's nothing there's nothing certain there's nothing specific in in this iteration of doctor mm. who it's just everywhere and obviously that's the point of you know there's no reins for um for shooty there's mm. no one keeping anything you know it in for him to you know what he's talking about recently um you know about this whole twerking thing and everything i I, I just honestly, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really. This is, this is the point where it's just gotten to me, where I'm like, I, I think I'm clocking out. I'm not clocking in. I'm clocking out. And it, it's, it's. This is, this is the first time ever because I clocked out like a long time ago, as you know, for Jody. Yeah, but you didn't watch the last. I, I got back in car crash, and I'm like, I'm, I'm only going to probably be watching the show because of Type Forty. I'm not going to be watching it because I wanted to enjoy Doctor Who again. Yeah. It's it's it it's really scary because the fact is that there's no there's no constructive um v uh, view for the show in the future, you know? I just see it as well, everywhere. Well, there's not there's I think there is a I think the vision for the show is starting to become clearer. It's just it's not inspiring a great deal of confidence. Mm -hmm. And so people like yourself, Matt and Lord Thoth, who's who's here on on YouTube says mm -hmm. I agree I love this show, which is why it's so maddening. Mm -hmm. If this was some two-bit sci-fi channel show, Adam, that had run like two or three seasons. They were thinking about adding a hyphen and extending the title and bringing in a few new cast members. So they can squeeze another couple of years worth of life out of it, you know, like primeval new world. Like they try. And that would be different, yeah. but that, that's not what this is. This is Doctor Who. This is this is one of the big three: the Star Trek, Star Wars, as Doctor mm. Who. This is this is special. It probably always will be special, but to see the people w into whose care it's been entrusted to be damaging it i don't want to be alarmist and i don't want to be reactionary about this because we've seen so little but it's just getting it's just getting worse and worse and people have mentioned here in in the live chat about a particular comment that that shooty gat was made in this piece i mean nobody's talked about the stuff to do with the costumes for example or his yeah. approach to playing the part and he does touch on all of those things in the entertainment weekly article but unfortunately he he also mentions uh, a particular dance move that he seems quite fixated on. He's mentioned it before, and it's quite a flippant remark, but this is the one that's getting the mileage, that's getting the, the column space in both the mainstream media and the genre press outlets. And he said, and people have mentioned it already in the live chat several times, that's what I'm going to put into the universe. I need the Doctor to have a big, fierce dance routine that, like, destroys a monster with twerking. Or maybe some death drops, and that's what will drop the monster. <laughs> I yeah, can't well, imagine I just... for a single moment that he's serious, Sarah. But these are the quotes. These are the quotes is... that just now... go everywhere. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've already seen this. It's so uh, damaging. Well, it, it is. I, I want. Yeah, it is flippant, and it, it is. You know, I don't take him seriously. It's just. Is this thought... a problem with the media, or is it a problem? Is it still a problem? You shouldn't with even him joke and the about people that, that though, Sarah. Well, the thing is, I. He just, I, I'm, you know, he's in the moment, he's having a laugh with the interview, and he's obviously been led to this point. But the thing is, it's just a really dumb comment because, you know... It's going to wind that, people up. Oh, it, it, well, it's winding, well, they'll think it's winding up all the wrong, the right people. But, you know, the twerking shouldn't even be mentioned anywhere near a Doctor Who. Again, a family show. It's just again. It all comes back to what Charlotte was saying. You know, Overtly sexualized behavior. Everything is sexual. Kids shouldn't know what twerking is. They do. You know, my kids know what it is because of like pop videos and things. They shouldn't do it. But it shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath. And um, 
it just really shows his immaturity and obviously it is going to ruffle the fellas. Of course, fans are going to react to this and, you know, not in a, a positive way. But yeah, again, it, it just seems really cringy, really embarrassing. I showed it Josh and he was just like, just, just not impressed at all. He's like, Mum, this is really embarrassing. <laughs> and he's like, and it, and it goes back to it every, is everything he said. I mean, it goes back. He's you know, he's fifteen now. He said, no self-respecting fifteen-year-old is going to sit and watch this. And you have to think, you know, there are going to be kids that watch this. There's going to be kids that are going to copy what Shooty's Doctor does. Mm. And I don't think that I don't think they're considering. You that. I've always oh. thought the last I've always thought the last five, six years was a joke. Now mm. this is just embarrassing now. And yeah. as a Doctor Who fan, I mean, I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, I I really do not want to be even thought of as a Doctor Who fan now mm. because I'm so embarrassed. Mm. And it's not only from me, but it's from the, the general public how they feel about this show, seeing mm. this sort of well garbage. On, on TV that's supposed to represent a 60-year-old show. And it, I, I understand it has to move with the times, but is this the times? Well, is this Does it the have way to move? Does it have to move like this? Apparently this is called leg splaining. Um, I'm still... <laughs> Why? Why? I don't, I don't know. It's like MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm just fed up with everything being sexualized. Can we just have one thing? I know, I know, sex sells. It's a gay it's, magazine, though. That too. So you know, you've got to have some yeah. sort of. Yeah, just going back yeah. to the the twerking comment and everything. I mean, we know sex sells. We know, you know, the adult stuff always does. You know, like Game of Thrones, with everything. Um, it has its place, of course, it does. Does it have a place in Doctor Who? No, not and and even you know the not to this the, extent. No. The Doctor and Rose stuff, and you know the Eighth Doctor and Grace. All right, there was romance, but it was very chaste in a way. It was, you know, it wasn't particularly sexual, and even you know. They never focused on it. It no, was and like it, a moment. And, I, and even, we, we, you know, we st I mean, you know, Stephen Moffat thinks he's so hilarious calling an episode The Big Bang and all that. But, again, it was very, very, you know, subtle. It, it wasn't, you know, the big focus of everything. No, it, and I it, think and that it, just, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is it is different. I mean, it's a, li it's a little crass, but it's crass with a very oh. small C. Mm. Uh, Shooty is the cover star of the 30th anniversary issue of Attitude. Attitude is, uh, it boasts itself as being the, the magazine, doesn't it, of the, uh, of the gay community. It's, it's considered to be kind of the, the journal, I suppose. It's, it's legitimate and it's very well thought of. And it says here, to, to celebrate this milestone in LGBTQ plus publishing, we've put together a bumper issue surveying the last three decades of queer history. And um, it's, you know, it, how, what's this? yeah, and, he, and here you'll get uh, an interview, an exclusive interview with Shuti Gatwa, uh, how the new doctor battled internalized homophobia to embrace pride, which is exactly the kind of thing you would expect Attitude to ask him about Adam. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a gay magazine. We, of course, they're going to ask him questions about identity and sexuality. It's, you, it's what you'd expect if he was being interviewed by Top Gear magazine. They'd ask him what his first car was. That's fine. So there's, there's all, all of this. And in some ways, this is as much relevant, viable publicity as anything else. But all these articles coming out in the same week and all this, all of this imagery, I, I don't know. It just seems like really sledgehammer and, and inappropriate. What do, what do you think? I, I do. I mean, I don't want to sound like an old fuddy-duddy, but I, I don't like the double standards of the fact that Shooty as a person and as the Doctor is being very sexualized. And if you were to flip that, and have it, you know, that with Jodie's doctor, you'd be absolutely. I don't know destroyed. what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I wish I could get my leg up like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I just no, heard I, my hamstring snap after seeing <laughs> that. I, I don't. I don't just mean within like the media, though, mate. I'm talking yes. about yeah. like when you when you open Twitter and I see yeah. so many people saying, "Oh, shoot, is so hot," and they're talking about, "Oh, yeah. a poster of Shooty in his pants, free with SFX. I'm thinking that's it's wrong. Like I, I listened to a podcast the other day, which is by these two gay guys. I love the podcast, 
but they're starting to do this thing called hottie of the week where they talk about which guy is the hottest in the program thinking this is wrong because you wouldn't have a, a another podcast with two straight guys saying who's the hottie of the week you know, if they were talking about women. So I, I don't like this whole I, thing. I do that. Do I you? do that totally. <laughs> I would. In fact, uh, <laughs> no, but I do, I, I do take it's not something. Yeah. It's not somewhere I would go to immediately. You're quite, you're quite yeah. right. Or, or let's, okay, let's use another example. If SFX were printing a yes. poster of the 13th Doctor in her underwear, you know, mm. and you tweeted about it, how much flack would you get? Saying, oh, you know, I can't oh, wait to oh, do yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably have know. my account taken down. So why is it okay to say, oh, we're getting a poster of Shooty in his pants with his giant bulge this week that I can't wait to put on the wall? It's like, it's, it shouldn't be in Doctor Who. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I have no problem with this in another program. Like when I watched the trailer for the new series, I'm thinking to myself, if this wasn't Doctor Who, I'd probably be thinking this looks really cool. You know, like as a gay man, I love all the flamboyancy in the camp. It's great, but I don't want that as Doctor Who, if you see what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I'm sort of conflicted there. Like I want to enjoy it, I want to like it, but I, it doesn't feel like Doctor Who, which is what I keep hearing people saying it, and I and I totally get what they mean. It feels like another program, which looks really right. cool and fun and zany and, and aimed at young people that want to go out and have fun. Great. But it doesn't feel like Doctor Who. Yeah, I, I think I think you could be onto something. I mean, I very much doubt that Colin Baker has ever nipped down the book he's wearing this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> But I think there's another side to this, and it's like, look at the conversations that are now happening in the run-up to this show. They're not yeah. talking about, oh, how is Chuty going to solve this problem? Is he going to use his intelligence? Is he going to use his technique? Is he going <laughs> to use, do you know, like, those conversations yeah. about the core aspects of this show? like What's his skill also, set going to be? Yeah, like, how is he going to solve his issues? Is he going to be brave against monsters? Is he going to maybe be a little more timid? Is, like I said, use his intelligence? Is he going to be more technical minded or physically make things like those sort of topics? And yeah, also, that's... I've just had this thought I'm sorry, where's the promotion of the companion? Mm. Where's the promotion of anybody set from shooty right now? Yeah, we're expected, they shouldn't to, be we're expected to swallow any bit of uh public relations blurb they hastily squirrel together and pop out regarding the companions i mean we won't go back there on this edition of the show because we covered that ground quite a lot but i know exactly what what you mean we're expected to believe everything that they say that they put out there without question when we know i stand by all our sources on that topic but it's not just that like i said when it comes I'm t I will get yeah they that so called press release I was just oh, all is not like, well yeah. this production <laughs> yeah. what no matter um, what yeah. I say but I'm taking more of just actually this show at its heart is about a doctor and a companion it's not just about the doctor and it should be also about monsters mm -hmm. it should be about other things and they are just all the conversation is what we're talking about it's how good does shooty look in his photos. How appealing is he? It's not about the core tenants of this show at the moment. And that's what's frustrating. And that's what I think is putting people off, honestly. Yeah. How, how will he see off the uh, the Santarans? Will it be with uh, pecs or glutes? That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> not, not quite the same. Oh, not quite the same. So, <laughs> it's, it's similar Get to what Matt, Matt said. It's similar to what Matt said John. earlier, though. They're not. They're not showing us anything else that could potentially be up in the series if there's some really no. great stuff mm. brilliant show me it but i always go back to 2005 you know when we had that trailer do you want to come with me mm -hmm. you know and you've got ten uh, eccleston running down the underpass with the flames coming you know i was buzzing to see that you know mm -hmm. the last few yeah. trailers i i've gone well nothing mm. oh, there's nothing that makes stuff. me think oh well <laughs> yeah Whereas now we're only getting one angle, aren't we? We're only getting the oh, let's let's do another article about shooty in a in a kilt, or you know, he's talking about twerking. It's only saying one thing, and again, that's just going to make people tune out. People are going to say no to it. I think that's attitude what I'm worried did, about. Did give us, Adam. Sorry, at, at, uh, attitude did give us. It's to your point, actually. Uh, another brand new look for the doctor he is going to be wearing this as well this white outfit 
Maybe Fred well, Perry. Yeah. Mm. He looks like he's going fucking golfing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just want to say, he's not going in a bloody TARDIS. He's going in a golf buggy. Well, you know, if he's hole. if he stands in there in the TARDIS, no one's going to see him because he's just going to camouflage. <laughs> in the That's right. Be right. Be Ch which change the lighting up. Uh, you know. just, I mean, that is, again, it's just so overtly oh, sexual because all you can see is his bulge. <laughs> I don't want to look at his bulge. Yeah. I can't help. <laughs> <laughs> it's just there I go because it's so clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bloody stupid idea to put him in white. Well, he's going to be it off to the left, isn't it, Starry? <laughs> Is it, no, he's going to be cl climbing things, running down corridors. Look, Starry, Starry. Starry. Let's hope there's no quarries. Let's hope there's no quarries in shooting. <laughs> Yeah. Look, going back, going back to what you were saying about Comic Cons at the beginning of the show, I'd yes. be scared to have a photo shoot with this guy because I'd walk into the photo shoot and I wouldn't know what he's going to be wearing. Bloody oh, where he put his hands. Seriously. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I could be, yeah, never mind Doctor Who, it could be Dong to Who. Uh, this, this particular outfit... This particular outfit, though, um, it has sort of been done before very, very briefly as well. It, is this? Is it, was oh, yeah. we rocking the same yeah. kind of look there, Adam? What were you going to say, mate? Uh, no, look, um, I can't remember what I was going to say, actually. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Adam. Oh, sorry, I've been totally... Uh... It's the trousers, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, the trousers, the trousers are too much, mate, even for me. It's just too much. I, mean, the thing, I think what I was going to say was I just hope yes. that he's not a one, you know, one B. I think I was going back to something John was saying yeah. earlier. That, yes. um, I think we've seen glimpses of Shooter's Doctor, you know, Ruby Road and a little bit at the end of the giggle. I think we've seen glimmers of hope there that he's got some opting, acting shots. He has got range, you know, so yes. there is there is potential there. What I'm worried about is that he's going to be written as this overtly over the top zany uh, uh, Sarah says about the constant smiling towards camera, which can, is starting to get grating. I don't want him to be one beat like Jodie's Doctor. I really want to see a yeah, range. Yeah. From him, and I think that's that's the thing that I'm getting from all these photo shoots is, is just this they're all the same, and I wonder if they feel like they have to do this to get people talking, right? You know, like yeah. like the character of the Doctor isn't enough for us. Like they've mm. got to dress him up as these crazy clothes. They've got to give us these ridiculous quotes to get us all chatty. Like, do you think, feel like they feel yeah. like that? You know, the show can't stand on its own two feet without all these. Well, but I don't. I don't think it. Can I, do? I think you've hit the nail on the head. I don't think they've got confidence in their yeah. own product. And yeah, this is I why agree. they've got to dress it up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, if you take just put a, in, yeah. let's take a look and see what some of the people in the live chat have got to say uh, about some of this because it is quite a lot. It is quite a lot to take in, isn't it? A twerk shock. Twerk says, shock. It's all about the twerking. This is what people are going to remember now. And it's quite yeah. understandable, Matthew. It really is. Yeah. That's Matthew Burroughs in the live chat. Twerk and shout. Can you, can you imagine if uh, Adric could have done that? <laughs> like, I, I never know if I was oh, right. On a Cyberman too. <laughs> Yeah, the butt plug invasion uh, uh, suggests Daryl Joyce. Hi, Daryl. Good to see oh, you. Oh, Daryl, that's a bit scary, love. Uh, a good man goes to twerk, says oh, Gary. Don't, don't, don't do that to him that episode. Do not that's do that to him that episode. <laughs> that's, that's my favourite yeah, pun. Gary, so Gary, you've crossed the line there. You take yeah, that yeah. back. <laughs> uh, uh, Simon Anthony says, "You know, the more I see of this, the less I, the less I want to watch this show. Uh, best live stream ever," says Lord Thoth. Yes, uh, Instagram and X at Type Forty Doctor Who with with that one. Thanks, Lord Thoth. Is that a sonic screwdriver? Screwdriver down there asks Matthew Panda. I hope we never find out, mate. I hope we never find out. He looks like a a, a, a villain. A villain suggests Liven's flame. Uh, uh, yeah, so again, this is kind of turning into therapy. Absolutely is. Uh, more more twerking puns. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, twerky shack. It looks like a white jumpsuit, uh, suggests Tarzis Travels. Again, you know, it just seems desperately impractical. For Like you say, Charlotte, they're going to near a quarry. He's got to go straight down the laundrette, isn't he? He's got to go, <laughs> pop off on to Albert Square. We'll get dimensions in time too. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you said, just any adventure, basically, that yeah. isn't in a clean room, he's going to just be useless on. But th there's another side to all this. Like, we're sort of laughing, and I've been thinking in the back of my head about this. What every doctor has 
And I think Shooty desperately will need it quite early on, honestly, the more I think about it. The Doctor needs to have a moment when they're unlikable, when they're mm -hmm. dangerous, where mm. they're nasty, that sort of side. You saw it with Eccleston in Father's Day when he, mm -hmm. he, when he said to Rose, oh, you, I've done it again, I've got another stupid ape. And that was a, that was quite that was horrible that moment what, what he was saying. They, do you think do you fear Charlotte because they they never let the the thirteenth her they never let her be seen in any kind of questionable light, did they? You know, apart from that one scene with Graham, which was so badly written and badly acted and completely ill conceived that you know that was got all those complaints. But there was no there was no lies. That, yeah, but... They just weren't confident giving any of those creases to the character at all. Do you think they'll do this as well? with shooty and i hate to say this based on the fact that they won't want to show a black man with any flaws or weaknesses to be fair i wasn't even thinking about that personally i'm just going off the trailer so far and the way like we said they're very clearly having shooty be dressed and looking like this charming cheeky chappy bloke he just like i said he needs that scene when like he's unlike like I said, unlikable nasty sort of that's the thought when you have god i'm so that's happy exactly you're, that's exactly you're... what i mean will they resist showing that side to the character to exploring it at all because they've cast a black man in the role i would never have thought this way i didn't think the, i didn't think this way when he was cast i was perfectly happy to see a black guy cast in the part and having never seen him act no reason to believe that he couldn't play the role <laughs> But now, uh, in this court, in this culture that we've been that we've been living in, and having seen a succession of characters who kind of look, who do they prance and preen around? They're very pretty. Nine times out of ten, they're youngish black guys. You know, there's a, a very similar character on Star Trek Discovery, played by some guy I, I don't know. But they they don't do anything interesting with him either. He's just there mm. as this kind of uh, uh, sensitive, uh, suffering soul. Yes, uh, and they don't explore the character in any way. Yeah, and with the way Russell's speaking, I could say, I think there's a chance he could not want to touch that area, like you said, because of the connotations. Ooh. But I, like I said, it, it, every Doctor in New Who, and classic, but my my sort of knowledge is better for New Who, mm -hmm. they've had that moment, like I said, excellent, stupid ape. Mm -hmm. Matt, no human can say anything to me today. With Capaldi, God, you could pick so many moments with Capaldi yeah, with that yeah. first season when he just let a human die when it was into the Dalek, I think it was. And he, somebody questioned him and he went, doesn't matter. I can't remember his exact wording, but he's yeah. very cold about it. And that's what I mean. He needs to have that cold nastiness. And and because also I was thinking, if, if he's wearing a stupid outfit, then it's going to be hard to take him. <laughs> in that mm. moment to be nasty and not and sort of horrible and unlikable and that's what i think they're so scared i've got the vibe at the moment that over sort of egging oh he's likable he's likable he's winking he's smiling you're gonna love him and it's like no i need to actually not like him sometimes mm -hmm. yeah and i, I think that's i did, even, I even, did even like him at christmas even way back to Pertwee's era, you know, there were there were times where he was, he 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 had a um a, a mean streak to him, especially when he didn't get his own way, you know. So, you know, it goes all the way back then, but there's just nothing. There's been no, nothing. I I I I think Dan, I will say it, and you know, if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong later on. But I don't think Russell's going to touch that with a barge pull. I think it. I think our concerns are going to be like what adam was saying is going to be a one-dimensional character it's going to be the cheeky chappy yeah. charming um and i think that that's it that that's gonna at least for this series i think that is all we're gonna see and, and i think it is going to damage the character because i don't i so think I a lot of brands are already damaged i, I wasn't because time. because russell is simply and I, I know that people particularly overseas don't believe me um, because the most most likely only doctor who i think it's a sin traveled quite well as well but most of russell's work i don't know if it's been that widely watched the world over but russell t davies is a fantastic writer and i didn't believe that he would that he would do that to a character that he wouldn't explore it in a rounded way which which 
based on any any external characteristics i never thought it'd even come into it and until this very week when mm. i i saw i'm afraid it was another quote another quote from shooty that that really perplexed me because as i say shut up for me for me <laughs> the, for me there's no reason at all that the doctor any incarnation of the doctor couldn't be a a, a black incarnation of the character it's never mm. never bothered me in the slightest and mm. when i saw shooty cast the impression that i got is that most people didn't really didn't really mention it so i was perplexed to see this statement here from shooty gatwa again this week this was when he was talking to to attitude and they asked him about the racist backlash and he says <laughs> it's not something i mean what backlash i i bet there wasn't even a backlash that I was aware of, let alone a racist one. But no. he says here, it's not something I'll avidly keep up on. The hate, it is kind of fascinating to me because there's so much energy they're putting into it. Who are they? Yeah, I think I they know. need to go and find a hobby is one thing. But another thing is that we, we do see <laughs> a shift happening in casting, in positions of power and in the status quo. You see people kind of malfunctioning because things are changing. Well, we didn't have a hobby. It was called Doctor Who. The, the, exactly. ma the, the mask is asleep there, hasn't it? <laughs> am I misremembering? I do not remember. I don't remember a, a backlash particularly, Adam, let alone a racist one. Is that my memory playing tricks on me? I don't remember there being hordes of racists saying this man shouldn't play the Doctor. It's only been two years ago. Um, certainly nothing I've, I, I've seen in, in all honesty. I'm not, that, I'm not saying there hasn't been, but I, I haven't seen any backlash. I think the reaction to Shooter's casting was overwhelmingly positive because I thought he, was, so. he was really popular in sex education. Like you, Dan, I'd never watched it, but I know a lot of people loved him in that show. So when he was cast as the Doctor, people were going crazy saying, oh, my God, Shooter's the new Doctor. So I, I mean, I don't know. I, maybe there was, but uh, to me, the reaction seemed positive when he was cast. The so, general yeah. consensus I saw was mainly of relief that the Doctor was a man again. To be honest, I don't. <laughs> Grace never, never came into it. from what from what I can remember. Mm. No, I, I, I didn't see anything either. Sadly, we're we're in an era now where the there's certain narratives being pushed and it's pushed on an audience to almost say there's a there's a section of you that are racist and you are haters and you you know that's not the case at all most people you find every day are just nice people that want to enjoy a good show and mm. i just get a trying to find problems that don't exist vibe with these people mm. um and Again, going back to previous doctors, you know, Tom and whatnot, you wouldn't have them doing any of this. This goes back to what we were saying earlier. There should be a fixer at the BBC and there should be someone there with him and going, do you know what? That's too far. Right. Can you pull that article? You know, mm -hmm. that I, I do not understand why there isn't somebody managing that situation. It, it, it baffles but say, me. Say, John, that he believes that stuff that he's just said. Yeah. Who's telling him? Who's yeah. putting the idea in his head? Because shoot, he's active on Instagram. He shares not all the time. He's not on there daily, but he's, he's quite open in what he shares about his life. And it's generally a, he's a fun person to follow. You get a couple yeah. of things. A, a couple of things are grammed every few, every few days, every couple of weeks, depending on how busy he is. It's all it's all a confection, really. He's not on X. He's not on Facebook. He's certainly not in any Doctor Who forums. And to the best of my knowledge, he's not a subscriber here. Although, if you shoot, if you're watching, so yeah. where is he getting this idea? Who is telling him that there's some sort of backlash, let alone one based on his? No, on his immutable it, it, characteristics. It's a, it's, something a like go to, it's a go to talking point, isn't it? Always, yeah. mm. it's the first thing that they say, you know. It's, it's so disappointing, just... Matt. It really is. I, I was yeah. re I was puzzled and I was upset when I read that. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it's, it's just it, it, it's, a, it's the way of the world now. It's like if if it had been cast, a white, another white man had been cast, they would have said, Oh. How come? How come you're not putting on any black people? You know why? Why, why is this only the only colour the doctor's ever going to be? You know, um, it's they're always going to find some negativity in it. I'm talking about journalism. 
Yeah. And yeah. those are, they're always going to try and put some sort of spin on that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm fed up with it, to be honest. I really am. Yeah. Uh, John said there, but, you know, why aren't people managing this? I, the worrying thing for me is that people are and they're thinking yeah. like stuff like the twerking quote and stuff is great. I, I worry that Russell's sitting back reading all these quotes and pictures thinking this is brilliant. That's what's yeah. worrying me. That the oh, it's wonderful, managing. isn't it? It's yeah. wonderful. Oh, yeah. he's going to be the best doctor ever, you know, and it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, his rhetoric has really, really grated on me and I can't stand him now. I'm talking about um, Russell. And this, I, I, it reminds me. It reminds me, Matt, of last year, I, or maybe it was the year before. There was one of those bloody awful Star Wars shows on Disney Plus. Which one? They're all drifting into one now. Yeah. It was the one. It was Obi Wan uh, with Ewan yeah. McGregor in, and oh, there was yeah. uh, an actress in there playing. It was a. To be fair, it was a terrible character. I doubt that Dame Judi Dench could have made a made a good stab of this role that they put this poor woman in. Terrible, yeah. two dimensional character. And unsurprisingly, the Star Wars fans didn't like her very much, didn't take the character. They saw her arc coming a mile away. It was a, I think it was on for about eight weeks, and everybody knew exactly yeah. what was going to happen by week one or two at the most. So people saw through it really quickly, and, and that show got a lot of bad reviews. But before, I think before the show had even finished its run, you'd got Hugh McGregor making a car video on his on his cell phone, on his smartphone, where he was saying, look here, all you Star Wars fans, I've heard about this racist backlash against my colleague. You're all terrible people, and this isn't the way of the force and something silly, something actory. Get out. And then it, yeah. and it got put out on the internet, and it's like, you know, suck, suck that, you you, um, you uh, misogynists, is and phobes, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, again, I don't think for a single minute that Ewan McGregor really knows what Star Wars fans are saying. I think somebody said, look, Ewan, mate, we've got a problem with the show. Uh, online, there's a lot of people that just don't like this character. They're not buying it. Or why, why is that then? Oh, well, you know, because it's because uh, the, the character's played by a black woman. Oh, well, you know, we're not yeah. having this. And so he's just reacted and gone, oh, I'll make a video. I'll tell him, I'll give him what for. And I, I think that this is a similar thing. I think it's another, yeah. another um, one out of that playbook. That's what worries um, me, John. And what I find with this, Dan, is the fact that, and similar to that Star Wars situation with Ewan McGregor, I've read up on it, and this is a new thing they do in the US called hate marketing. So they do okay. it to get more clicks. Um, even if people turn off from it, they think, oh, our Twitter will go up because we'll get so many views because people are so angry. But also, with yeah. regards to that Ewan McGregor thing, and it's happening in Doctor Who, and they say about no one should be racist to, I think it was Moses Ingram at the time, but they never show the receipts. They never put up the proof that that has actually occurred. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think we're going down a dark road with the current production. They're going to try these things as well. And I really hope that doesn't happen because Doctor Who's for everybody at the end of the day, and, and we should all be enjoying it. But yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, you know, we we were all buzzing when he got announced, as as we were saying earlier. But it it's just you've had the slow drip feed, haven't you? If you had the Suze Kempner, you had you had other things that popped up as Ooh. it went along. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and there's all these My things God. that happen. And then you've had the Davros situation. The PR oh. front of it has all been terribly mismanaged right from the word go. And and you just you, know, you would think they would work on a way of getting people interested in the show at the end of it, you know, and say, Adam, okay, that was a good show. Adam, were you in Britain for the Destination Scarrow Children in Need fiasco? Yes, I was, yeah. That was the first time when I was a little bit worried about Russell, actually, because hmm. um, someone sent me a fantastic clip of him from, like, 2006, where he was talking about keeping the core essence of the show, and it was, um, it must have been Series 4, so when he brought back Davros with... Hmm. Uh, the Doctor and Donna, and he was saying there are certain things you never change, and Davros is one of them. And I thought, God, what happened to that Russell? Like he's Problem really is he changed. had too many people in his ear hole that that you know were offended by that that character because they were also in a wheelchair, which I never even thought of. He was most of, nearly anyway. everybody I know that was offended by what Russell said uh, during the Destination Scaro are friends that are wheelchair bound. They were actually terribly yeah. upset with and, yeah. what he said. One, yeah. one, one of my best mates is in a wheelchair, and that actually he had issues before, like worries, mm -hmm. but 
that's what made him go, I'm not watching it now. So that was a major issue. And we did a lovely live stream if people want to watch with me probably being the most angry people I've ever seen me. <laughs> that was and the one that, where Gary was Beakley was, was on the panel. Yeah. 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 So on that, yeah. on that note, I need to go. So good night, everybody. Oh, <laughs> all right. Thank Bye, you, Charlotte. Good night, Queen Charlotte. Charlotte. We are in the we'll same room, look, me and Charlotte. We are, I know we, are. <laughs> we are actually in the same room. She's just there. She's literally just there. <laughs> We'll... No, no, then. <laughs> Bye. 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 We'll see you next time, Charlotte. Thank you, as Thank always, you. for your company Thank and your contributions. Bye. 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 Bye bye, mm -hmm. bye bye. And yeah, it's the same to everybody who's been dropping comments across YouTube, mm -hmm. Rumble, and Facebook. This has been worth getting deep into the weeds on, I believe. Uh, Richard mm -hmm. Brooks says the racism and hate crime accusations are thought stopping exercises. That's very profound. Um, I'll probably need to give that some further thought, uh, Richard, because as I say, this is all. Yeah, I, I've just found this week very hard. I found a lot of this really hard to read. Um, Heretic asks, has Russell T. Davis become a perverted old man now writing fan fiction for himself? You know, in some ways, I can see why people are asking this now. Um, Doug uh, speculates here now, if we dislike this new series, are we going to be accused of being racist? And of yes, course we are. are yes. We already are. We That's already what happened. We were misogynists in the last lot, yeah, so yeah. come on. <laughs> Uh, James is in the chat as well. James, I, I didn't, don't remember seeing you earlier, but happy to have you back, James. I'm gay and keep wishing he'd stop with the sexy fashion shoots and act more doctorly. Again, it's chiming exactly with what, with what well, you were saying. That's there, how Adam. I feel, James. I'm a gay man, you know, and a lot of gay men are, are lapping this up and thinking it's all fabulous and great, but not all of us. Some of us are sitting back thinking, yeah, it's not. This is the I, thing. I think the, the majority. Doctors, I think the, the majority doctors. with you. It's just. It's just people whose voices carry further and who are more persistent. Sorry, John. Yeah, that's okay. I was just going to say that. Yeah, I mean, the doctor. He's. He's not gay. He's not straight. He's an alien from another planet. He thinks completely differently to we, mm -hmm. to us. And as Charlotte said earlier, stupid eight. That's how he sees us. He's not mm -hmm. interested in the, the silly little squabbles that are going on in the planet. He's looking at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And the people writing it now, they just don't understand that. And it amazes me considering they say they're lifelong fans. Mm -hmm. fans? Yeah. It, yeah. Exactly. It's earthbound. Even though, you know, it's it's supposed to be a space show, it's it's completely mm -hmm. earthbound. When they're in space, it's earthbound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, John it, Matthew no believes Matthew favor. Burroughs believes that Russell T. Davis is heading for a mighty fall from favour and it's going to be epic. Do you think the right? Oh, that's could already be happened. Wall? That's already happened. I do yeah, you know, I said I, oh sorry, go on. No, no, you go, you go. It's all right. <laughs> I'll just be brief. I was going to say, I said this when Russell was announced they're coming back, that at the time I was delighted that he was coming back. Yes, yeah, so I was, was also very surprised because when you reach the top of the mountain, there's only one way down. And I said, it's a really brave move for him to come back because he had a fantastic legacy and he's really jeopardizing it by coming back. And that's exactly what's happened. I yeah. agree. I agree. I mean, you know, maybe by the end of the summer, maybe the public will embrace uh, Shooter Gatua and the 15th Doctor. Yeah. What was he in prison uh... for? <laughs> twerking. <laughs> twerking, with twerking in public. <laughs> I've, heard of twa I've heard of twerking, but no. <laughs> Can I have your uniform for, an, for the new series, please? <laughs> I'll tell you, I've said it before. He's working his yeah. way through the village people. It's he's only going to do the Red Indian next. <laughs> if, if they if I do reopen the Doctor experience, the the room with the the fifty Doctor's costume in, it's going to take you an hour just to go through it. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> He'll leave like, his own the, room, won't he? Will, that's why. Right. That's the real reason why it's not coming back because they yeah. can't afford the space. <laughs> they They'll have a wax. The they can't They'll find a room big enough. Yeah. They'll have a wax statue of him on a clock going round and round, twerking. <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad he didn't twerk in that video. Don't give him oh ideas, my... John. Don't give oh, him ideas. God. I thought it was a woman thing anyway, twerking, but there you go. I mean, get, going back to Russell for a moment, because I, I do believe my instincts are still, I mean, trying to be, I, am I trying to be generous? No, I think I'm being pretty realistic. Uh, the penny's dropping with me that Shishi Gato could be being mismanaged for, for reasons that uh, maybe will become apparent in, in the fullness of time. I don't, I don't know. Russell T. Davies, uh, I don't believe he's cast him to deliberately make a fool out of him or to... Um, or to damage the character, but I think that I think that's kind of what's happening. I think his aspirations for the for the show and the character 
were initially coming from from the right place, but I do believe he's massively out of touch. We've got this quote as well from Entertainment Weekly from Russell this week. He speaks about about his arrangement with Disney. And uh, because although this was happening again, you know, the idea that this is lock, stock, Disney, who is uh, is at fault. This show was happening anyway. But Mm -hmm. Disney, obviously, there's a there is an an arrangement. There's been a dialogue between them. And the involvement of Disney is obviously something that Russell really wanted to make happen. He, He wanted to have a streaming home. And Disney was he's been very clear that Disney was his ideal, his first choice, because in Russell's head, Disney is still the family brand. He's behind the times by about 10 years, everybody. Yeah. But the, he says here that they said, we want to make Doctor Who bigger. We want to take it to a streamer. So this was the BBC, sorry. We want to make Doctor Who bigger. We want to take it to a streamer. We want to go worldwide. We wanted to have a bigger budget. And we wanted to be up there with Stranger Things, Star Trek, and the Marvel shows. We think it's good enough, and we believe in the show. Well, you see... So- it, it used John, to be worldwide. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was just going to say... It was worldwide anyway, you're right, Sarah. He's yeah. already there with Star Trek and Marvel shows because they're in the toilet now anyway, so he's, <laughs> it's easy exactly. to step, oh, step yeah. over them. So. What sort of bubble would you have to be that. living in? What sort of cave? If you were, if you were to be th- anywhere near the idea yeah. that Marvel and Star Trek were experiencing some sort of creative boom both of them are in the toilet bowl just as you said well he's employed some disney riders too hasn't he so you know he's completely blind to it yeah but he's completely blind to it the fact that they weren't very good i think we've said it before russell is not as savvy as he once was and i no longer believe he has got his finger on the pulse with tv as he wants to but it's not When when it came back in two thousand and five, I felt Doctor Who was a was ahead. It was becoming a trendsetter. Other shows were then starting yeah. to try and emulate Doctor Who. Mm. But when I see quotes like that, I constantly now see it as, well, there's nothing new. There's nothing trendsetting about Doctor Who anymore. They're effectively copy and pasting what a lot a lot of these other shows do now. Like when you talk about potential a musical episode coming, you know, Star Trek have just done it. Mm. There's nothing that stands oh, out now, you I know. Keep forgetting that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. I'm going to punish you every week for that. <laughs> but yeah, it does feel like oh. yeah, because Doctor Who was at the forefront, yeah, and now it's running to catch up with other shows, and that's. I mean, obviously, that it's not just Russell's fault; it's Chibnall's fault as well. The years of damage, uh, yeah. and that it's got into this point. But yeah, Doc. Doctor Who is, you know, running behind. But this, what's happening now, is not going. It's just going to make it fall further behind. Yeah, I've got so. a quote here from William Hartnell, John. Uh, this is how he viewed the part, uh, and uh, how how effect how playing it affected him. He said, "I felt like the Pied Piper. Everyone calls me Doctor Who." And I feel like I actually am him. But I'm not. I'm legitimate. I'm a legitimate character actor of the theatre and film. So he was proud of the part and his association with it. He felt like it was part of him. And he recognised and appreciated the response that it got from the audience, particularly the children. Yep. It was was a job of work. It was a job of work. It wasn't just a step on any kind of ladder yeah. to take him to whatever the next level would be. And I do, I am starting to feel that even if Shooty didn't feel that way when he first won the role, that he may be feeling that way now. That worries me. Yeah, I think so. I think when you look at that, you know, Hartnell was already established as a great actor mm-hmm. and he came into it. And, you know, I know it was a different time. You didn't have all these press releases about how great I am. And you're right, with Shooty now, it seems to be look at me, look at me, look at me. And it's like, well, you need to just shut up or someone needs to tell you to shut up. Be nice. Let's Yeah, let's let's see what it's like at the end of these episodes. If it's great, we'll all celebrate it. We'll all praise you, you know. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, then, you know, pride comes before a fall. Um, Mm -hmm. And and sadly, I think, you know, someone like that, his ego is going to get crushed by it because... Mm -hmm. 
people are we bigging him feel, up clearly in a bubble. Um, we should we should feel you know we've, we've had an hour of it. We should feel now that something magnificent is about to happen. That we're going to yeah. be really entertained over the early part of the summer for the best part of two months. And yet, what I see from a lot of people. And I do think, Sarah, from what you've said about the responses that you've had from your family members and, and Adam, from the people that you've spoken to as well, you do wonder, are, are, are people seeing any, any of this? Is there any energy around the show? Kieran, Kieran here in the live chat says the show is completely burnt out. It's burnt itself out and it needs a good long rest. It's the only way the show can be saved. Uh, hiatus is the only the only real way to way to go. I mean... Doctor Who, Russell believes that whatever happens to Doctor Who in the short term, it'll always come back. But he, he seems intent on pushing that as far as it could go. But do you think it simply has been back on for too long? Simon Horton's a big advocate that they should have taken it off for five years. I mean, what, yeah. what do you think, Adam? I, I, as much as I would hate to see Doctor Who not being made anymore, um, Me I too. think what I think it needs is uh, it, it, it needs, I was going to say, it needs somebody completely new to to take it in back to being a science fiction show because the problem with russell coming back is we're seeing a lot of the old tropes and we're also seeing a very different russell t davis you know the the red flags started appearing during destination scarrow mm -hmm. and also uh, a couple of shows back you were talking about him when he invited Stephen Moffat back when he was first announced oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and i was waiting for you to bring up the quote from russell saying the first person he rang was Chris Chibnall, who declined to come back. And then I phoned Moffat and I thought, oh my God, that just tells you everything you need to know of where Russell is because he's almost trying to antagonize the fans that, yes. that want to love the show. That's the thing I don't like because... The reason why I didn't bring that quote up is because I know I have, I have it on good authority that it's simply not true. Oh, okay. Um, uh, in, in that case, why did he say it? Why did he say yeah, it? Yeah, what? exactly. That's what I mean. It's, it's another way. Oh, I recognise the fan. It's been, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's because of exactly what you've said. It, it's Some of it's a show of solidarity. Mm. You know, I've no doubt that yeah, that's the course, case. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But he knows. I, I cannot, again, we can't talk about our sources here at Type 40 Live. We, ne we never have and we never will. Russell knows. He knows he feels the same way largely as we did about that material. And he knows how we felt about it. He know he knows why the general audience deserted it as well. All of this is all a circus. In some ways it's necessary, but I just think he's pushing it that bit too far. I think a kind of owning the crash site a little might actually look a little bit better, Adam. But what I don't understand is when Russell took over when he came back. He knows full well the state the show was in. Now, if that was me, the first thing I'd want to do is keep hold of those few loyal fans that are still clinging onto the wreckage like you yourself. You think so? <laughs> well, but yeah. instead, what he's trying to do, it seems, is antagonise us even more. By and, it, and I hear the core of the new series is going to evolve around the timeless child as well. So again, I'm thinking he really is trying to pee us off and what he seems to be doing is just wanting to, to to chase after this audience that doesn't exist. And that's I don't get why he's not trying to yeah, call back those fans that, that want to enjoy this show. Again, he's sort Instead of oblique of reference. I've I've got that. I mean, I'm aware that we're we're sort of overrunning already, and there's lots of things we haven't got into. I've got the that quote is also driving people wild, because, and it's being mis again. Like everything that's connected to the culture war, a lot of it is being misrepresented and misreported on both sides. He does allude to that, but I believe he doesn't actually mean it to in the way that people are assuming it. it. And this is people on both sides of the aisle. The people, the feverish handful of dogged, foaming at the mouth, Jody Whitaker fans that are still stalking the land. There are some still out there, everybody, so really keep keep your guard. They are all over this stuff and really embellish it. But you've yeah. also got people on the other side of the aisle as well, who it's all hashtag RIP Doctor Who, blow, you know, who just, who, who've never given it a, a single minute in court, let alone a day for the last two or three years. They are also running with that as well. See, you see, he believes in the time as child. It's all going to be this. It's all going to be, and, and, and neither of those things, neither of those things, is the case. Is the case. Well, I think we'll probably have to come back to that one another time.
Mm. The but thing uh, is, yeah, it, just don't mention it. It's so contentious. There's no how, need to mention it. How quick people drop the old, I'm half human on my mother's side. Like, yeah. We'll never mention it again. <laughs> but it just keeps coming back. Like yeah. a He's already thing. retconned the timeless just, child yeah. on screen once. It's been, it was retconned. Yeah, yeah but he did that in the giggle. And yeah. then he brought, then he alluded to it again in Church and Ruby Road. So he, seems he alluded to, to he alluded, thing. well, he alluded to some, I mean, I agree, I agree, Sarah. I think he's trying to have his cake and eat it. I think he's trying to please everybody. Dancing too uh, he, well. He alluded yeah. to a, a, an inversion of that kind of mystery yeah. somehow. And that, because the beauty of it is that he doesn't have to deliver on it. You know what? He doesn't have to deliver on it at all. I don't but think he, he will. No, I really don't think no, he will. No, he, he doesn't. And there's certainly no urgency to do so because Doctor Who is a, I mean, the way I view it, Adam, is that Doctor Who is a, it's a anthology show kind of masquerading as a serial, you know, because you've only got the two characters that go from episode to episode. Mm. A lot, a lot, you don't need to go back. To, you know, the Time Lords were only in like five stories of the classic era in, in the, well, I was going to say 26 years, but they didn't exist until, really, until 1969. So in mm. 17 years, they appeared like five times. You don't need to go back to this stuff anyway. But of course, it's so incendiary. Anytime anybody mentions it, it's understandably shackles get, you know, right the way back. I'm the same. It, it affects me as well. It does. But I do try and sort of take a few steps back and think, hang on a minute, but this and this and this. <laughs> I, I, I do think what Adam was saying about, like, you know him coming back yeah i'll be honest i was quite happy for him coming back because i liked the 2005 era but i really wanted straczynski uh to come in because he wanted the job didn't he and Is i just thought, babylon five gone yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so Michael straczynski yeah and i was i was very much in that camp and i was thinking this is your opportunity now to take it in a completely different direction mm. you know you know, it needs it needs yeah. a reset. It needs someone else to step in now with 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 their writers, their crew, and see what they can do with it. And um, as much as I, I'll give anybody a chance, I just I'm amazed at what we're seeing so far because I thought he'd at least stay loyal to kind of what he did in the 2005 era. Mm. Um, but it, it seems to be going another direction entirely, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I, I totally it agree. It was plot and character. It was story and character focus. Uh, focus. Sorry, Adam. No, I just guess I totally agree because that's what I was saying. I, I wouldn't want to see the show rested, but I, I kind of want to reset because what, what the show is now turning into is kind of like flogging a bit of a dead horse. It's it's kind of being throat, tossed around to the, the yeah. same people. Here, here, Stephen, take the ball. Here, here yeah. Russell. I, I, like you, would love to see somebody like, uh, who's the guy, the Babylon 5? Straczynski, yeah. yeah. Somebody yeah. who wants to take it back to being a science fiction program and really, you know, like you said, a bit of a reset. That's what I would love yeah. to see. Mm. But it's not going to happen for some no, time. sadly not. Mm. This is the brand new promotional post that we featured at the top of the show. At the TARDIS, yeah. several TARDIS is sort of spinning off into, into the distance there with Lots of planetoids. They're all, I mean, even this, <laughs> even this looks a little bit bland compared. Do you remember that one of uh, Peter Capaldi uh, mm. hanging on? He, he was sort of, he was hanging out of the door of the TARDIS and mm. Nardal was stood behind him and, uh, and uh, Bill was dangling yeah. out of the TARDIS as they were, they were being careered through time and space. There was a real sense of momentum, of urgency and danger about that. And this just looks like, well, it just looks quite bland. Look, Shorty looks weird. He's like, yeah, he looks very feminine, doesn't he? Isn't that, that, it, just, it doesn't look... Is that AI generated? Because it's got a bit of the uncanny value no, about it. Is it just me? It's, 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 I think you may be right. They may have... Matt? They've probably used AI to smooth his um, his skin out mm -hmm. a little bit. Because they, they, they've done that recently with... Um, mm -hmm. oh, oh, God. J uh, James Cameron has just done that recently with his... Um, his true latest uh, and... with aliens, yeah, with true lies and that he actually used oh, was he AI really? to, yeah. to 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 get rid of the grain, the film grain, and that. How's that gone down with the to... with the punt? How's not that gone down with the punt as well? People have been well. waiting. No, because he people, wanted to. People have been waiting for that remaster for over ten stock, years. So. He yeah. wasn't happy with the film stock that they used, so he wanted because it was very grainy. But that's that's the whole point of it. It made the film, you know. But anyway. 
Yeah, it's, it's a very yeah. weird but some of the posters i think have been quite nice but this one is, is a a bit weird it has to it has to be said yeah, where's the rest uh, of his coat it's it's like uh, over there <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing behind uh, it it looks like Darryl, Doctor Strange. joyce says Darryl joyce says if doctor who is rested the culture within the tv industry will need to change before it could come back strong in my honest opinion no, i think a great many people yeah, feel that yeah, way yeah, yeah. i think that's probably that's, yeah, yeah. Probably wise. Uh, we have um, Robert Payne says the doctor can't be half human and a timeless child of the timeless child. And then we've got Simon Anthony here who says the timeless children you know, concept is totally fine by me. The show can and I think shall go any, anywhere. Again, it, Simon, we uh, you, you're welcome here. You, you know you are. Generally speaking, yeah. you know, it's, it is obviously, I'm sure you're aware, fiercely unpopular. Um, Simon, but, uh, it was a you, garbage storyline that just but you, no you, one you, you. liked. No one liked it. No one the liked show, it. See, well, one person that, did. Fact, they they sounded yes. like it, the but... fact. The fact that we're fifty odd minutes into a new era, and we have a lot of people saying, just as Tardis Travels is saying here to finish off, the show's lost direction and needs to be rested. That's that's really sobering really i know it's just one guy but this is something that we we're hearing and we're seeing a lot and my main worry is that for all the trailers for all the posters for all the costumes uh for uh, millie gibson looking stunning verada sithu look, looking stunning and and shoot his big old schlong it, none of that really <laughs> matters none of that really none of that will matter a jot if the public don't sign up for this cosmic joyride and just uh, how many yeah. weeks three three four weeks until we find out we I, shall see please let I us mean, know in the comment section what you think about our entire conversation i mean me being John. the optimist i would say that i think in a few years several years from now we'll look back on this era and i think we will have people in charge that will properly steward shows mm -hmm. i think I think I don't know how long it's going to be. Going to be a it's decade not, it be a big longer, ass, should it, John? Yeah, only multi-million um, brands. And, and, <laughs> and, and, exactly, and, and, and to check that, check it, and make sure that you know things don't go off off script, and and and, and things aren't put into the show that don't fit that that show. Uh, I think we that's a long way off. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it, Dan! Otherwise, uh, the Malibu's going to come back. Yeah. He, looks, he looks like he looks no, it like, looks a like he's trying to ride a horse without a horse. <laughs> he's, he's doing he the Gundam like, style. Gundam style, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, oh God, I've forgotten about that. That was awful a, as well. He's a camp robo man, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we've been talking about the the quotes that have made it to wow. the pages, whether you read them traditionally as magazines or whether you get your uh, your. What was it? Tablet version. What are they called? Emags. Is it is an emag or an ebook? I don't know. However, you read these <laughs> magazines. <laughs> and, yeah, we've been looking. That's we've been looking really at bad. the interviews with Shooter Gatwa and Russell T Davies that are featured in Entertainment Weekly and Attitude Magazine this week. So they are available wherever you get your magazines, either digitally. That's the word I was looking for. Or uh, traditionally, in the case of Attitude, it is available at all stockists, as is SFX. So there's another piece, uh, a, a much larger exclusive <laughs> piece about Doctor Who generally in you might SFX. Want to move this, the comes... Down. <laughs> <laughs> this comes. You know what? They just move, need to move his move his head just a little bit towards the F and make it a sex magazine. <laughs> So, yeah, so this comes <laughs> bagged with art cards, a, a huge double-sided poster. Uh, that's the one I think you were talking about, actually, Adam. It's got it's got that terrible picture of Shooty in his underpants there. That's beyond me. So that's in there as well. Uh, but it says, an, on the front cover, it says an all-access for season one with Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson. So quite what they mean by that. Obviously, you've got to find out by getting in the well, pages. Millie on, on the SFX cover magazine. as well, then? Yeah. Well, you see, this, is, this, is, this yeah. is what I mean, Sarah. Have you noticed since all that fuss that Russell T. Davis is determined to try and dial back on and say, don't look over there, don't look over there, since all that fuss, Millie Gibson has disappeared from the front covers of pretty much all merchandise. But that picture that came out in the week, that if you look at the body language in both of those pictures... She is standing away. She is, she is effectively, her body language is pushing yeah, her I've away seen. from shooty. So that, you know. 
a conversation is, for another a conversation yeah. for another yeah. time we'll i i think it, there because yeah. we have we have run out of time but yeah you go and get these magazines particularly uh, sfx there with uh, the dead boy detectives interview the vampire inside number nine you know sfx is a big supporter of doctor who and uh you see i feel i do feel for the sfx editor because as soon as his magazine comes out as soon as people get their subscriber copies some people take every bit of information and put it all over all over x all over twitter and it, it, they are perilous times for print magazines and i think that just like doctor who magazine i'd hate to see sfx disappear so uh, yeah all due respect to the people who yeah. use their jobs they're yeah, journalists they're for a long time, Consci- hasn't it, Dan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 the conscientious yeah. people. Yeah. And but SFX is a, a it, long-standing yeah. title. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Okay, yes, but people say it's too expensive. I think magazines, I yeah, it is very covers. expensive, yeah. 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 yeah, so let us know what you think of all of this in the comments section, by all means. We've done, we've got a deep dive on this topic as a kind of form of sort of therapy. I think, and quite understandably, after what we've what we've read, uh, Doctor Who is back on screen from May the 11th. Mm, this is the 10th, really, depending on where you are. May the 10th, May the 11th. That's when we're going to get these episodes. There's two the first week, and then they're going to roll out one per week. We assume until it's all over. Don't get us started on on this schedule, Adam. You say you're going to be back in UK by the time it all kicks off. I shall be back, uh, yeah, ready for this talk kickoff. And don't forget, everybody that's here, it's all back to Dan's for a Doctor Who slash Eurovision party. (laughs) (laughs) Because we know how much he loves it. And uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that more than anything. Well, yeah, I just want to say, Adam, uh, David Tennant's not the only uh, 50-year-old that wears velvet trousers. (laughs) I know (laughs) Yeah, you haven't seen our Can't Eurovision wait. contest. There's a reason why. There's a reason. There. Oh my there's a, god! There's a reason why we only see Dan Hadley from the uh, show from the waist up. Yeah, I was, the, ju- I was just thinking because room. when we did the thing, at, because obviously you, you can you can see you can see me sort of full length. I mean, not as full length as you can see shooting, but uh, <laughs> you can see me full length on the Hooverville. Hooverville videos. I was thinking, well, like, I was wearing. I, it wasn't. It wasn't velvet, but it was moleskin that I was wearing that day. So check out my moleskin trousers there on the video when we when we hit Hooverville last year. Uh, but oh, yeah, please let us know what you think of all of this in the comments Is section. Is going to be I'm aware, it's... <laughs> like I'm, I'm aware go that we've gone. Who's like so? I'm aware that you could say that we've been quite harsh on this. We've gone very deep on the topic, but these quotes have travelled. They really, no really have. Anymore. And and this is the kind of I won't say the kind of mud that sticks, but I think everybody said it on the panel. It's this kind of publicity is the stuff that people remember. And we're in the run up now to this this season. And yeah, we know there's another season coming behind it. I think they've nearly finished filming it already. And there's mm-hmm. a third on. We know that Doctor Who isn't ending anytime soon. But I think none of us want to see it none of us want to see it paraded across screens for for years and years on end with the general public disinterested disenfranchised or disgusted by anything that making the show, a joke out of it anything that the show is doing or anything that the people involved in it are saying let us know what you think of it all in the comments section and thank you so much for your comments on through this uh, through this particular conversation where should we go where should we go next we'll go here the universe is collapsing the only way to save it is to watch type 40. okay who said more white pills who said more white pills yes we've, we've got them they're stashed in the bag because this is it everybody this is how we always ran things out with a last look at the view screen it's our regular eye up your temporal schism in search of the prettiest pictures from out there in the universe so it could be digital art it could be traditional art or it could indeed be crafts and cosplay it's all they're all viable targets for us to get them up on the view screen have a good old old look and the, all the talented people out there adam they, they're coming thick and fast despite the fact we've done a lot of complaining this evening people are still inspired by this show by the characters mostly from the past i have to be honest but even from the present and uh, it never ceases to amaze me that the quality of the fan art in doctor who do you, do you see much of that on your travels as well um well i see a lot on twitter but not not so much on my travels uh i mean yeah but- yeah 
Well, I noticed that when you go out, you, you go to a lot of like, galleries and geeky sort of oh, venues. Oh, yeah, I do. I love, I love art, actually, yeah. Oh, do you mean do I see any Doctor Who art in the galleries? Yeah. That, sadly not, mate. I saw, I went to Fan Expo last year, uh, which is a big convention over here. There was loads of fantastic mm -hmm. fan art there. Um, I'm a bit gutted because David Tennant's going to be at Fan Expo in June, uh, but sadly I won't be here. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only time I've oh. seen fan art over here, mate. You've started something now. People want the Eurovision coverage. Do it. Oh. Do it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, God. You know you love Eurovision, Dan. Changing our name to twerk 40, I'll, we are. I'll do, it if Adam, <laughs> I'll do it if Adam comes on. Us. Well, I'll there DJ. I'll DJ off the yeah, We'll just keep nice. the party going. <laughs> <laughs> right, de dearly boppers and uh, a, a, with your cowboy hat on Adam you've got to wear your cowboy hat book your flight I'll, I'll, wear, book your flight. <laughs> I'll wear a bright pink sparkly boa obviously yeah. what else yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll wear my cowboy hat I'll put, I'll put my bunny ears <laughs> back on and get a little tail <laughs> I'll wear a Mavella right. wig Yes, come on, white, this is happening. Let's a do bright this. white cowboy hat and, and John and his Mavellan wig. Yes, if you have, let's make it happen, everybody. Let us know what you think. Let's keep the engagement up, and, and you never know. Uh, oh, let's look at the, at the fan art for the time being. Uh, we can't have too much excitement, can we, this time of night? First of all, uh, we looked earlier on. It's David Tennant's 53rd birthday this day. We also had a picture of the lovely Freeman Argument out at the bingo, didn't we, earlier? So I thought this was ideal, this latest piece from Nipuni. This uh, yeah, this is called good. Dr. Doctor, oh, no. and we've got Dr. Smith and Dr. Jones back to back there. John brings back some happy memories. Smith and Jones is one of my favourite episodes of the show. Yeah, it was a great episode, and they've, they've captured it really well, haven't they? You know, it reminds me of a bit of like a Titan comic book cover, really. Is that the same, is that the same artist that did the picture of him and Wilf? Like with Tennant and Wilf, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. same one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. Same, you can you can just tell the style, you know. Yeah, just nicely. They're not dead ringers, are they? The likeness is there, Sarah. But obviously, you can tell who they are, and that's what matters. Yeah, I know, but it's yeah, but I like that. I like it's got that certain charm about it. But you, you know, it's mistakeable. The eyes, you know, he's got the the outline right. The David Tennant hair. Um, but yeah, look, again, fantastic episode. Another brilliant companion introduction. Um, yeah. I always thought that was a brilliant idea that Martha was training to be a doctor. It, it, that idea just worked. It was brilliant. Um, but yeah, yes, yeah, very, very happy memories of this. And yeah, I, I, I just love like this cartoony style. I just think it's beautiful. What I like mm. about Nipuni's work, speaking as a, as a designer and illustrator myself, is how they incorporate type into the art as well. It's very graphic. Mm -hmm. Beautifully mm. judged. Mm. The colours are always so well chosen. It's got that sort of worn look, Matt, without looking distressed. I, it, it's just perfect. I've got to find out who it's this person is. It's minimalist, but then mm. it's not. It's great. Mm. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's going, down, yeah, really it's going down very well in the live chat as well. Wonderful, says Vanessa Law. It's, uh, it's nice. something that looks fantastic it's, it's on a shirt, stuff. isn't it? On a T-shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. It would yeah, yeah. Work really yeah. well as a design, yeah. 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 Fans of Smith and Jones are into Smith and Jones is good. This is one of the. Every, this is an episode that whenever you mention it, people go, "Oh yeah!" Mm -hmm. and everybody smiles because it was so much fun. Uh, the right attitude, yeah, it, it is. It 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 captures their attitudes perfectly. That mm -hmm. precise dynamic between those two characters, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. I dig it a lot. Says on comics. <laughs> and Tony Farrell uh, notes the limited choice of, of palette really, really works. Yeah, that's absolutely, absolutely right. Lovely, lovely work there from Nipuni. You can find their work on Instagram and on Twitter. Next up is this one. This is a team up as well. And uh, not of doctors this time, just of artists. I say just two fantastic artists, Lee Binding and Aidan Wilkinson. Aidan calls himself TARDIS oh. Man, has been creating the ultimate TARDIS artwork. For years now, John, are you familiar with Aiden's work? Yeah, I have, and I saw this earlier in the week, and it, it's great. I, I, I love it. And is this going to be on a on a potential future box set by any chance? Do you think? I think not. I think it's it's something that the two gentlemen between them thought would be uh, just a cool thing to do. Aiden created the artwork as he does with a lot of his boxes. I, mean, I, I just it. love how the TARDIS is slightly slightly balanced there. There's a gap underneath it as if it's mm -hmm. materialised on an uneven surface. It's a really nice touch. But it was one of his artworks that Lee decided that he would have some fun with. So they worked together to create this. It reminds me very Terror of the Zygons. Yeah. It is. I was just going yeah. to say that. Yeah, that's yeah. what it means. 
makes me think of and oh yeah just the colors the yeah. the warm glow out of the tardis it oh it's good it, it, it actually reminds me of the android invasion yeah yeah ah, i can see yeah, that, I can see that oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, you've, now you've said it yes yeah, yeah. I, yeah I love that really story nice. so much the synthetic world <clears throat> Gary Aker says it's sublime. Lee, if you're mm. out there, Aiden, I hope you're watching this. Absolutely gorgeous, says YW. Uh, lovely picture, says Richard Brooks. I, I really like this. I mean, I like all of Lee's work anyway, and I've got a lot of lot of time for Aiden. He's a, a really nice guy. I've spoken to him several times. Uh, Lee, as, as you rightly said, Adam, this is... Um, He's one of those artists who is he's very active, isn't he, on his social media accounts. He's quite generous in what he shares. And, uh, yeah, you, you do, you kind of wonder, will if this doesn't turn up on a Blu-ray box set, John, could yeah. it maybe oh, come it out as a, a print oh, of some kind? Know. It looks like something that would be in the booklet. Exactly. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You open it up and, yeah. That'd be... Yeah. But, uh, regardless, I want it. <laughs> yes, me too. Me too. Uh, this all, come in, all comes yeah. back to Tom, doesn't it? Darren says a proper, Love the a Tom. proper doctor, proper, mm, proper yeah. doctor. Of course, it is. Uh, another proper doctor here. Real and uh, early on, Sarah, you mentioned about your close encounter, your your near brush with uh, Daphne Ashbrook and your fabulous signed picture. We're going back to the Eighth Doctor's era now. Uh, and this one, this is from the account Doctor Who and the Ooh, Moon Journey. Yeah. Oh, I like that. On I hope that is real and not done by AI because it, that looks amazing. Mm. Um, and I'd just I'm, feel so dirty if I don't like it. Well, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm sorry to break your heart, Matt, but it is done with AI. Uh, uh, but... Uh, in this instance, but in this instance, uh, this particular account, there is a degree of the traditional. I think it's a blend of the two that this yeah. artist uses. I've no idea who runs that account, but they do traditional um, character studies that we do in the industry. People who've worked in the industry will know. Mm. They go to it and they they've created a lot of imagery already for uh, one particular Hartnell story, but now they're playing with some uh, some of the audio stuff. So this yes. is inspired by the uh, the very first of the Paul McGann yeah. audios from Big Finish. That was Storm Warning. Mm -hmm. This is a, yeah. a direct illustration of of that. Great. Now, I think audio. that's meant to be the Tardis Library, John. It is, yeah. And um, didn't he put another one? out as well with the r101 shot with the clouds if he has if i guess i don't know if it's a, if it's a, a male or a female oh, yeah, but yeah, if, yeah. They, if they have i haven't seen that but i can imagine that it's looks great just though, as beautiful yeah and Again. i think i've seen one as well they've that whoever it is, is is done which look really good it's kind of it's got a picture of gallifrey but i think it's the gallifrey oh. that they wanted to do from if the tv movie had gone into a full series oh, okay, yeah. um, oh, from the leaky so bible that. thing mm. yeah so but this this is you know i i love it but yeah, you know I, I love i love that audio as well so it's <laughs> absolutely stunning and it yeah i i love the idea of the tardis having a library and it's, and i just love oh, i love yeah. the dance tardis all you know that victorian art i just love it, it yeah, so yeah. perfect for him. Every it's time great. I watch the TV movie, Sarah, mm -hmm. I always wish they turn the lights up just a little bit so I can see into some of those nooks and crannies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen pictures of the set with the lights on full, Adam, and we know that it was just a load of drapes and the concrete. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, illusion concrete. was ruined. Yeah. 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 It was all part of it was all part of the studio they filmed it in. Yeah. But in my That's imagination, it. the stuff yeah. that we couldn't see that was slightly out of went on forever Slightly out of our fear of vision yeah it would go on forever john and this is kind of on reflection kind of what i've always imagined there's a little and bit I, more gold leaf it's a little bit more titanic maybe than i'd imagined but it's all good and i think this is what they were trying to do with what what tom had said before that the tardis could be an entire world in there you know you could have cathedrals he was talking about that and they really did big the tardis up in that tv movie didn't they to say look this thing is big and we, they yeah. never scratched the surface, did they? And it's a shame because I love that TARDIS interior. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. do as well. Absolutely. I love the exterior as well. I think uh, yeah. the TARDIS prop looks so chunky and fantastic in that TV it movie. It does. Yeah. It looks really yeah, me good. Too. 
but the we'll interior is lovely. We'll have to go back to the TV yeah. movie, won't we? It's been yeah. years since we talked about the TV movie on Type 40 Live. It was, I think we'd only been doing the show about four or five months. We did a deep dive on it, but I think we could go back to that quite happily. Yeah. Uh, Tony Farrell says, I, I like Eric Roberts Master in the background, isn't he? Oh yeah, he is. Oh yeah, Jeez. I didn't, I didn't spot him either. No, yeah. I didn't see that. Bloody hell! Oh, that's, that's a, you've well got done. eagle eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he's his cloak and everything. Well yeah. done. Yeah, very, that's very great. nice touch. Uh, yeah. YW says, "I just, I just love the Eighth Doctor, my absolute favourite." Yeah. It really does say something for McGann that yeah. with one TV movie and one short on telly. That um, he can still inspire oh, yeah. people the way that he has. It, he? Yeah. This was yeah. another thing that was um, going out at this um, event on Saturday, Dan, after the merchandise museum. Yeah. We were going to watch the TV movie with Daphne oh, at, nice. at a pub. Brilliant. Like, my two favorite Brilliant. things Doctor Who and a pub and Daphne. Amazing. <laughs> and yeah, and then she was going to do a QA. I'm so after. snipping that. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, so yeah. out of context. <laughs> yeah, so it would it would have been fascinating to watch it with Daphne and you know get her perspective. Yeah. I, wonder, I wonder when was the last time she'll she probably surprise you. Well. She'll probably yeah. surprise you more now. She'll turn up at your doorstep with a she, DVD she might in do. her hand. She might do. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the way, yeah, she'll have stopped off at the offy, brought a few bottles. <laughs> Come on, Sarah, let's get tanks up and watch the. She'll show up movie. anyway Come now. On. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous fabulous stuff and one last pretty picture i think I, I had to get this one in some ways he looks impossibly young it's the kind of muppet baby's version of this character matt but somehow it still manages to capture the impishness of patrick Troughton's incarnation of the character <laughs> <laughs> this is to make a great sticker yeah bandar -lager. I, mean, I don't know if people just put these names just just to uh, frustrate podcast hosts or, or what. I, I don't know, but, but I do. I really and like this. And the old light bulb, the old light bulb thing that never gets old, does it, Matt? No. 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 I have an idea. <laughs> oh, Sh Charlotte, same Charlotte's not here. She would have loved this. But yeah, it is yeah, the perfect kind of yeah. I don't want to say um, caricature, but yeah. It's very, very stylized, and more yeah. than the little sort of uh, beetles or the monkeys. It would look great mm -hmm. again. It look great on a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I Think of a like number, says Crimpy <laughs> Bloom. Think of a number. <laughs> it does look a bit like Johnny Ball. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <Johnny> bingo. <laughs> uh, Maybe he's playing bingo with so uh, far, yeah, so yeah, we've got, yeah, we've gone. Yeah, we've gone full circle back <laughs> to bingo. <laughs> oh, Johnny Ball, eh, Adam? That's a, uh, the that's a blast in the past. No who this is. Who, who Johnny is Ball? Ball. Legend. Oh, you, yeah, even, you, I, even I'm old enough to know Johnny Ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but oh, you live Matt. in the UK. I don't. I'm, I'm from another planet. As an anglophile, I'll s either look him up or I'll send you some links concerning yeah. Johnny Ball, Matt. I think you oh, find him. Uh, I think you find him very entertaining, very, very Across interesting. Across the generation. Yeah. As always, if you're a fan artist or you know a fan artist, you think that we need to get on our radar and up on the view screen for everybody else to see and to find and to shower with, with praise, then please send them our way in the comments section. So we'd like to know where their website is, where their social media is, or their Instagram or DeviantArt page. We don't need to know their address. It's okay. <laughs> but we do want to find more fan artists to sort of to bring in and maybe get them in for a chat as well because we do love talking to the arty types and the creators because the Doctor Who community is absolutely chock full of them yes you can reach out to us as always through our social media Instagram and X at Type 40 Doctor Who with some of that or you can join us yeah if you're a fan artist you just want to show us right away you want to cut out the middleman go and do it by joining the Type 40 Facebook group now I'm not saying that all of these incarnations of the Doctor are also members but they could be the only way that you can find out is by joining the Type 40 Facebook group and seeing seeing for yourselves, joining in the conversations, and we're all counting down to the new episodes together through fair <laughs> yeah, or foul. Down, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are, but as long as we've got as long as we've got something, something to nip at there, whether it's alcoholic or not, Sarah, and a tart or two to hand. I do worry that this new series mm. is gonna really, you know, push my 
limit with alcohol. It was bad enough with Joe. <laughs> next week, next week it'll be two Malibus, won't it? On the it will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, join us again next week. Same time, spaces generally for more hot takes, cold shoulders, pet peeves, bouquets or pot shots. More type 40 live. Heaven knows what we'll be rambling on about. Well, we know some of it because a lot of it will be the stuff that we had to cut from tonight's show. But <laughs> it was, it was well, it was well worth doing. It was well worth doing. I mean, quite what he would think of it all if he ever happens upon this edition of the show well i don't know and quite frankly mate at the moment i don't care you need to sort yourself out you need to sharpen up your act it's only a few weeks until season one of all new doctor who hits the screens and we're going to be covering it whatever here at type 40 live you know you could say we'll cover it so you don't have to whatever we're going to be there on Eurovision, <laughs> Eurovision night. Whether we'll have the Eurovision party oh, or not, I have boy. no idea. But uh, you know, the idea—it's—it's it's out there. It's definitely out there. Just uh, no twerking, no twerking. Unless we're twerking the the handle there on the TARDIS console. <laughs> ah, yes. So, you guys, yes, of course, Matt, as our real life time traveller, it's Friday for you already. What's mm. it? What's it like so far? So the bombs haven't started falling yet, have they? Everything's okay. No, it's just one day closer to um, to, Oblivion. to, <laughs> to Nukuti Gatwa's um, debut. <laughs> uh, never mind, never mind. Well, I hope. Or should I say debut? Got... He's already been on, but mm. you know. See, people forget. We keep. I keep forgetting. I watch the bloody thing. We keep forgetting, don't we? Well, yeah, I hope you enjoy your too. weekend, whichever depraved activity Thank you're going to you. be indulging in. <laughs> oh, always. come on. You know me. Twerk 40 here. <laughs> Twerk 40. It, it, that, it, that is, it, that's a late night show that we're going to be putting yeah. out. Yeah. It got to the point. I'm it got late. to the point where the live chat, for particularly from YouTube, was just a steady stream of a dozens of twerking puns. I think we're going to have to go back and sort of make some sort of some sort of collage of them, Adam. Adam, congratulations again on Thank your you wedding. Thank you. And I'm so happy that you've been able to make it back to us because it's been a few months. Mm -hmm. I just hope it's not quite so long until the next time maybe you can contact us from when you're back home i don't know yeah no i'd love to come jump back home when i'm back in the uk mate that'd be great because i think whatever happens with this new series we are going to have so much to talk about that's one thing i absolutely know for sure so yeah i look forward to jumping back on and uh, see where we are in a couple of weeks time before that's we go fabulous. though dan did did yes. we ever find out the answer to the, the bingo quiz question the school name <laughs> oh no no Nobody did anybody answer it Nobody, Nobody got it. No, Nobody got the answer in the live chat. Okay, okay, so I'm going to explain. Because the winner gets we... the signed print of by Daphne Ashbrook, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they didn't have this off bottle of Malibu. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer, so, Sarah? So the name of the school was Death Reveal. Oh, oh, I was completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, completely I... wrong. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and I think I remember now. When they said the answer, I could remember the D and the V logo yeah. on the school jumpers. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. But you still won. Uh, you still won anyway. And this was yeah, your swag. This is what you came away with, wasn't it, Sarah? Oh, nice swag. Yeah, it was some nice swag. And I really wasn't expecting that because obviously, you know, it was for charity at the end of the day. So yeah, you know, it was a lovely. Is, is that is that uh, is that actually all signed by the doctors? Really signed by the doctors? Or is no, that I think a it's a reproduction. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you, Sarah. I don't see a thirteenth Doctor box set in there, Sarah. You know? <laughs> I know. I know. She, already, I'm, she already. She already has as it. As you, John. That that was omitted. <laughs> Is that a bra at the front? Oh no, it's a ribbon. Okay. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done, Sarah. And thank heaven, Adam, that you remembered to close that loop. We've got a professional podcast. What I'm here for. <laughs> Speak, speaking of which, Adam, you mentioned the podcast earlier on. It's a fantastic show. Where can people hear more of you and of your co-host, Gary? Yeah, so yeah, uh, me and my friend Gary, we do a, well, we try and do a weekly Dot2 podcast. It's called the Big Blue Box Podcast. And uh, we are absolutely so excited to review the new series, good or bad. We can't wait to jump into it. So <laughs> yeah, check out the reviews. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And we'll put a link to that in the description to the video too. Uh, John, it's it's been a long one. You said you, you stepped into the breach on this one, mate. You regretting it yet? 
No, I loved it. Thanks, guys. It was great fun. Yeah, we survived the twerking. It's good. We survived it. We made it. We made it through. And the leg splaining. Well, I've been. I, somebody's told me to look up what leg splaining is. I haven't got round to it yet. I, don't somehow Google I it. think that yeah, if it's anything like, oh, if it's no, anything like, <laughs> well, a few weeks ago I looked up snowmanning, and I, I really wish I'd oh. never done that. So, oh God! You know, I, I, I really, yeah. I think I, I think I shall resist on this occasion. Uh, I would. But yes. <laughs> look up what a merker is. What a merker. Is. You'll be, you'll be I, know I, know what a merk, I know what a merkin is. <laughs> oh, oh, do you? <laughs> I don't, but a merka, a merka is the thing from Warriors of the Deep, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like yes. where this conversation's going. No, let's, 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 no, let's no, go no, over no. it. Thanks <laughs> again, John, and, and well done, Thank well you. done to Sarah. Uh, yeah, Thank fabulous you. comments Thank here you, in in the live chat. Oh, people are going for it. People want the twerk forty. Uh, the twerk, see the twerk forty. Oh no! Who's, what have you what done, have everybody? Done? What have you done? Oh. <laughs> Uh, check out the podcasts and the live streams and the playlists and all the rest of it. Let's make a sharp, a sharp exit, I think, everybody. Look, uh, doors are open. It's, uh, that's it for this one. We always have the time. If you have the space here at Type 40 Live, uh, we're off. Twerking off. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.